It was a normal day in the high school. Tony and his best friend Jack were standing outside the classroom for the first class on math, and they were talking about the upcoming soccer game against a neighboring school. So do you think we have a chance against this school? Yeah, Tony. You know it, as always. I mean, we have won a lot of games lately, so I don't think we had much to worry about, though. Yeah, that's true. Even though I heard this other school has good players and some of them can be tough for the opponents, well, do you know that we always give our best in attention on the games? Well, that's true, said Jack. But you know, we always give our best when it comes to the games against others, other schools or friendly games afterwards, as always, said Tony. And then the Sunday the teacher walks up and tells the students to get ready for the first class in math. Even though the first few classes went quite well for Tony and his classmates, it wasn't until lunch break when he and Jack went to the cafeteria to have something to eat for lunch. They were sitting by a table and just talking about this upcoming soccer game and other few things. But a distance from them is that at another table sat three girls that they would know they knew well. Kelly and her two best friends, Sarah and Molly. They were just talking about this some random things, and even though they couldn't even hear it. So, um, Tony, have you heard about this uh, upcoming big test soon? Huh? What test? Said, said Tony. You didn't hear? No. What is it? Um, I heard of the two some teachers talking about um, there's going to be a big test in math within a few weeks. Oh? Yeah, and from what I heard, this is actually going to be like over 50% of our final exams, or our final degrees, grades of, this, of the year. Oh wow, I didn't hear that one. Did, they, did, you, did you hear exactly when? Um, no, uh, they were talking about in the, in the next few weeks or so. Ah, well, they at least gave us some time to plan those to study more. Yeah, I just... I hope that another one won't fail. Jack, you have never failed any much test before, have you? No. And who can you think that for? You. Exactly. If you need any help at studying, always tell me, and I will help you, no matter what it is, if a test or I mean, just a homework or anything that you need help with, you know I can help you with. Thanks, Tony. Tony is always helping his friends but if they need something, help with the homework or anything, preparing for a big test or anything, or including whether to help him practice some soccer before any upcoming games or anything. And his friends know that he always is there to help them, no matter what it is. Even though he doesn't even have much, even though even though that he had a lot of spare time, but he always put a lot of time to help his friends if they need it. And that is what makes his friends to appreciate him very much. Even a lot of teachers had had really appreciated that he helps his fellow students, including his friends, if they really need. And that is well about his well liked among the school, like the teachers and other students, other students. I had the cafeteria. Kelly and her two friends noticed this girl sitting next to their table by herself. And her name was Nikki. Nikki was a, a, like Tony, a top A student. They had been bullying Nikki for over a year by saying that she's a nerdy girl, that no guys would even like her, no guys would even ask her out on a date, then look back. And that always been have been a problem for Nikki. But today, all change. As Nikki was standing up and was walking past, past their table, Kelly moved her leg and tripped her and said, Oh, you can see where you're going? Ha! <laughs> hey guys, look! She's tripped on her own feet! Big feet, nerdy girl! And every, some of the students started laughing, but not everyone. Tony and Jack saw what happened. And he didn't like it all. Because Tony has no tolerance against bullying. And he didn't like Kelly that way doing this. Because he and Kelly had known each other since middle school. Because back then, she was unlike now, 
she was more really friendly towards anyone. But now, when she started high school, her personality had changed. And even Jack and I had noticed also, because he and yeah, Tony went to the same school as Kelly. Can you see, believe what she's been doing? Yeah, said Tony silently. I can't believe that no one has actually tried to tell anyone, or the teachers. Actually, someone had told her, but the teachers didn't believe it. Or they said, at least there's no proof or any, or that the other person that's being bullied by her has not even came forward to telling. There's nothing else you can do. I hope so one day that maybe Kelly can realize what she's been doing is the, is the wrongdoing, said Jack. Well, when that happens, it will happen. Trust me. She realized her mistake, and I can just tolerate that. I know that, Jack, said Jack. But you know, you know that Kelly has a crush on you, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, if she wasn't in it like the bullying other people like that, it might be a chance I could like her, but like now, what she's been doing, especially against Nikki, a kind girl, I would never even consent ever even to be with someone like her. You know, you might write about that. But one day she realized, will realize her big mistake. Yeah, true. But hey, let's enjoy the lottery lunch and prefer to enjoy the rest of the day though. Yeah, said Jack. After school was over, Tony and Jack could say goodbye to each other, and when he was about to go to his own car, he noticed that Nikki was standing by the sidewalk and looking at her phone, and he walked up to her. Nikki? Is everything okay? She looked up and said, Oh, hey, Tony. Uh, yeah, everything's okay. Nikki. Do you need any ride home? Um, yeah, my mom is not able to take me home. Well, I can take you home. Since you don't live that far from where I live from school, so. Are you sure? Yeah. Positive. He, okay. So she hops in in his car and he drives her home. And it isn't. It wasn't that far from her house to his school, though. So. Did you enjoy school today? Yeah, I did. Well. When what happened in lunch break? Yeah, I noticed. And. I can't stand her like doing it. Yeah, I too, said Nikki, a little bit shyly. Since Nikki is a bit shy girl and yet she only had a few friends at the high school. Well, we are here now, said Nikki and pointed out her house was just an in an instant. Well, if you need any help with something like homework, you know, just give me a text or call. I, I, will, I wouldn't rush it over to help you with it. Yeah, I know. Nikki was aware that Tony always helped his friends, and even though that he had helped her a couple of times before, and she didn't mind it. Well, thank you for left home now. Anytime. See you at school tomorrow. Yeah. A few days later, on the Friday, both Jack and Tony were talking about any plans for the weekend when the other friend, Mark, showed up. Hey guys, any plans for the weekend? Uh, not really, said Jack. I mean, I have nothing played, any plan for. How about we see at my place of my home on uh, Saturday for, you know, a gaming night? Both Jack and Tony looked at each other, and they usually play games with Mark sometimes a couple of days, sometimes in a week, and both said, yeah, we're not for it. Good. See at my place on, say, 3 p.m. on Saturday? You know it, said Tony with a smile. Good. And after that, they had made plans. But as they were leaving school, Tony noticed that Nikki was standing in front of the sidewalk again, alone. And he drew up to her and asked, Hey, Nikki, you need to leave home again? Yeah, my mom is not to be able to take me home. That's okay, I can take you home, though. Really? Yeah, hop in. But in the distance, that Tony didn't notice, but he didn't, that Kelly saw Nikki hopping in in his car and took off. 
Kelly felt mad because what he did, but since Kelly had a secret crush on Tony, even though he was aware of it already, but he didn't pay much attention to it. Kelly, are you okay? said Molly. No, nothing is okay. That girl, Nikki, just can up, can end up in a car with Tony again. Like, again? said Molly. Yes, again. How many times have I been doing that? said Sarah. Twice, so far, as I know of. Do you think they are dating? asked Molly. No, he wouldn't even date her. I mean, I mean, she's cute and all, but she's never that much as for him. She's too much nerdy for even his liking. Well, you know that nerdy girls all often get the most cute, popular guy, said Sarah with a smirk. That will never happen, said Kelly. But how would you make that happen, though, said Sarah. I don't know. Maybe telling him that. You know, I'm not so sure that might work, said Molly. Oh, how do you know that? said Kelly with a little bit angry tone. Whoa, calm down, Kelly. I'm just saying, he might not even believe you, though. She might have a point, Kelly, said Sarah. Fine, but we had to make figure out something. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe we can figure out some way. We will figure out something, though, said Kelly and Sarah at the same time. Even though Molly were one of her close friends, it was undoubtedly if they would even figure out some way, but she said, Well, we may find out an answer to your to your plans, but but at least let's enjoy the weekend, okay? Maybe we can plan out after that. Yeah, that's true. We are only just going shopping this weekend, said Sarah with a smile. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that though, said Kelly with a smile. But like, Let's put this girl Nikki behind us and just focus on the week. Agreed, said Cesar and Molly. And that weekend, at, on Saturday, 3 p.m., both Jack and Tony showed up at Mark's home. Knock on the door. Ah, you guys are all here. Come in. Ah, so you brought you snacks and some other necessary things like drinks, chips. <laughs> you know it, said Jack with a smile. So, what games are we playing? Uh, I thought maybe I some racing games, maybe, I don't know, Resident Evil, some games. As always, said Tony, you always play those games, but you know you always beat us. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you saying I'm a cheater? No, said Jack, you always play that games all the time, all the time, without we would even here, said Jack with a smile. Well, that's true. But as if we have made a cheater. Mark, Mark, we didn't call you a cheater. You just beat us because you play the game so often so that you know how the games know. To the playouts or the best way to hide and even the best, the best way to techniques. Since we don't play the game ourselves as often, so we don't maybe get a chance to keep beat you. I mean, you have an opportunity. I'm mean, not call you a cheater, you're just. You always only had a better option for us. That's all, said Tony the smirk. Yeah, that's true, said Mark. But anyways, let's go to the basement and start playing this game, man. I'm looking forward to beat you guys again. Oh yeah, you're right, said Jack with a smile. We will beat you this time, I'm sure of it, said Tony. Oh yeah, bring it, said Mark. Rest of the day, though, they were actually having this great time. Playing a lot of games in the basement. You guys okay down there? He said Mark's mom. Yeah, mom, you're okay. You have all the things we need. Let me know if you need something. Alright. Jack and the others are just having a good time, Tony and Mark. Just playing around games and they even played almost around to like 10 p.m. Oh. Yeah, it's like 10 p.m. already. What? What? Seriously? We had all the it feels like we just started, said Jack. Um, I may have had to go home though, says Tony. I have to help around at home tomorrow. Hey, come on. Maybe just one more hour, said Mark with a grin. 
Ah, okay, you have one more hour, but then I had to go home, you know, all right? And one hour later, ah, uh, man, I'm so tired, I had to make to stay here for night, said Tony with a smile. Well, my mom would not much bother that, I mean, she had not had much problem. You can take the couch and you can text your parents saying that you stay here overnight, just be home there early tomorrow. Okay, so Mark told his mom and she was okay with it. So both Jack and Tony stayed for a night. Even though Mark wanted to play some more, but both Jack and Tony said no. Because it's already 11 p.m. and Jack has to leave early along with Tony. So Mark agreed. So the rest of the evening, they were just small talk and fall asleep. But as Monday arrived for our next week, things was looking well well. Well enough for both Tony and his friends at school. But something was a bit different. As Tony was standing by his locker, he felt someone tap on his back, and he thought maybe it was Jack or Mark or any of his friends. As he turned around, oh, Jack, oh. But it wasn't Jack or Mark. It was, in fact, Kelly. Oh, hey, hey, Tony, she said with a smile. Oh, uh, hey, Kelly, you need something? Uh, yeah. I am. I wanted to ask you something. Oh, what is it? Well, I heard that the school is gonna have a dance in a, in a month or so. Are you heard about it? Actually, no. But you mentioned it? No, I actually haven't heard about it. Oh, well, it knows that probably because I heard from the principal and some of the teachers talking about it. So, about the dance, are you would you take any anyone special for a dance? Um, now you mentioned it, I had even realized yet, or since I haven't heard of the dance yet, so I, I had even paid much attention to it or focus on it, but um, I might let you know maybe later on, but do you even know when the, this dance is gonna be? Uh, I heard it's maybe about a month after the big test. Oh. Well, that's giving me a lot of time to focus, or a lot more thinking, deciding from that. Yeah, I'd give it right. But you will even let, let me know, though, right? Of course. Okay. She said, said she said, and walked away with a smile. Even though deep down he already knew that she was hoping that he will take her to his dance. But even deep in his mind, I'm not going to pick her to dance because even though she believes that I will take her, she will be much wrong at that. So the rest of the day, things were just normal. Having a day at normal school classes and even during lunch break. Lunch during a lunch break, Jack and Tony were sitting at the table themselves talking about this upcoming game or something like that. Since the game were only about in the next two weeks. And both were actually very excited about it. So have you and the coach talked to them anything about the game, like any strategy, tactics, or anything? Said Jack. Um, not really, but I'm sure our coach had something good planned said for this game though. Since both Jack, Tony, and Mark are in the soccer team together, and since they were actually having team leader as what Tony is, they always had a good chance to get good chances of be beating the games. But you know, I heard something about it, this game said Mark. Oh, what is it? I heard that today's school actually is going to invite some talent school, uh, scouts, town scouts for other schools. Maybe offer this, I don't know, scholarship for soccer to the schools like universities or college. Really? Said Jack. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I heard about it. I mean, I don't, can't confirm or deny if this even is real though, said Mark. Well, if this is actually true, maybe they could see that Jack is a good team leader and also a good player. Maybe he could be offered a scholarship. Um, you know, Jack, even if that is true, that what Mark's saying is, I'm not so sure if they will even ask me, though. I mean, they could ask anyone in the team, maybe you or Mark or maybe the others. Tony said, Jack, Jack said, Tony, please. Me offered scholarship in soccer? Ha! <laughs> that will happen in like what, in a million years? I mean, come on, Tony. Yeah.
anyone who has been offered this before, if I'm if I'm gonna have a chance or opportunity to be offered the scholarship, so is Mark, you, or anyone else in our team. Come on, realize it now. I mean, even if our we anyone us any us of us has been offered this scholarship, it's a good deal. Even if I'm not even being offered it, uh, maybe you could be offered. He's right, though, Jack, said Mark. Any one of us could be offered, including you, and me, or Tony, or anyone else. Yeah, you have had a good point, said Jack. But any though, I'm looking forward to this game. We will beat the school once again. Well, I'm not so sorry about that, though, said Mark, but grin. Oh, yeah, would that be, said Jack? Well, they might be tougher than they're not always. I mean... Who knows, they may have trained even better than us, much more. Maybe a more intense training is... I don't know. Have you been spying on them? What, me? <laughs> no, said Mark with a smell laugh. You know, I don't spy on people or anything like it. No, said Tony. But you may have a good point. Who knows, they may have even be better players than I'll be against us this, this time. Well, you may have a good point, Jack. And said Tony. But the same, we will beat them, said Jack, when agreed. Well, if we don't, it will be up to you, though. What? What? Me? said Jack, almost shockedly. And both Tony and Mark's laughing. Ah, you got me there, you got me there, dude. <laughs> well, we know that the Geese game will be easily beaten, said Jack. Well, we will see. And even during the lunch break, Jack could see in the distance that Kelly and her friends were just standing around Nikki and just saying something. And he nodded, nodded, and nodded to to Tony. Huh? What? Look. And Tony looked and saw exactly the same thing. And he's like, not again. One day, Kelly, one day you will be getting his punishment as not expected. Even though Tony just wanted to stand up and walked over to Kelly and his friends to tell them to stand away from Kelly, from Nikki. Stop bullying her because what she had not been doing to them? Nothing. Because just one random day Kelly and her friends walked up to Nikki and start calling her names like nerdy girl would never actually get a boyfriend, she's too ugly, she's too stupid, and that she's some many words, but no one actually was willing to stand up against them. Even though Kelly and her friends were not that so popular, they were popular girls, but they were not so on anyone they were to stand up against. Because one time a guy did stand up against them. What happened? They started bullying him as well, and they were so enough that he couldn't stand it anymore. So he asked for transfer to a different school, and that was the last anyone ever tried to stand against them. And even though Tony himself would not even be much against them, he would even, he knew, even if he did stand against them, they wouldn't even try to do anything against him. But for a few reasons, he's a team player, he's a team captain of the soccer school, or the school's soccer team, and he's a popular guy, and he had a lot of friends, even the teachers, the principal likes him. Because he is a really nice guy. And if they would start targeting him, it would only end the mark the, the end of the days of both Saul, Sarah, Molly, and especially for Kelly. And that they both knew that they wouldn't even do anything against him. But if they try to target someone else like Jack or Mark or anyone else, the same thing would result. They will actually would have to send both Kelly and her friends to a different school, or different schools, in fact. But anyways, they never do anything against the school team. But since so far, Nikki is the only other student that has been bullied by Kelly and her friends. Because after since then, after that guy stand up against them, they had only focused their only their target as for Nikki, no one else. And at least Tony is glad that no one other two students has been targeted by Kelly's endless of bullying. But even though he felt regretful that not have standing up against Nikki, but he deep down wants to do so. But anyways, they just 
suddenly was walked away and left. And both Tony and Jack looked at each other with a endless blank face and said, One day, and Tony just nodded, one day. A few weeks later, everyone was against was getting ready for this big upcoming game for against the neighbor's school. Even though only about the day before the big game, Jack, Tony, and Mark, along with the rest of the team members by this coach office, discussing about the debating about this new strategy that he came up with. So, had everyone else had any ideas or any objections about this strategy? But none of the none of the team had no idea, no objection. Well, I may have one said Jack. Ah, what is it, Jack? Said the coach. Well, what if I switch my place with someone else? I mean, I know that I'm not defending you, coach, but I mean, what about we took Mark in my place and I took his? I mean, he's a faster than me, and he's also a good shooter. Um, you have any against that, Mark? Said the coach. No, I think that's actually much better. And I mean, I see from this, he's beautiful, coach. If I'm faster than my Jack and stronger shooting than in the ball at least, it give us maybe a better chance to win against the team. Other team. Do you have it against that idea, Tony? Since Tony is the team cap, team like team captain. No, I'm not against that idea, coach. Good. So we will do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you by tomorrow morning or afternoon afternoon at this at school. Great, said teacher and the team at the same time. Even after the meeting, both Jack, Mark, and Tony were sitting in his car, driving them home. So, are you guys pumped up for this game? said Jack with a bit of grin. Um sure I am, said Mark. Uh, something okay, Mark? Well, not so certain though. I mean, this game and this other team, they are tough players, at, as was always, but um, I'm just hoping that we will win. But then Tony said something that unlike that he usually say. You know, even if we lose against them, I'm still actually proud that we at least give them a good chance to win. Whoa. Tony? That is unlike you, said Jack with a smile. Well, just saying that, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm a little honest. I mean, even if they, we lose against them, they give us a good chance and even a tough game to play. That's what the is, said Jack, and said Tony with a smile. Well, that's true. Well, here we are, said Tony, and left drop up both the drop up, drop up Jack and later Mark. But when he came home, he was just laying on his bed and thinking about this upcoming game by the next day. He was really curious how this outcome was going to be. But at least he knows one thing. It will be an epic game, for sure. But the next day, Mark, Tony, and Jack, the rest of the team, was standing on the play on the field and looking at the team, other team. And before the game was even started, they literally walked up to there at the opposite of their opponents and just talked to them for a bit. This was actually more the friendly games between just these two schools. And since Tony was well respected by other team members at the other team, because he is always a good player and always fair and always shown good leadership in his team. They were just talking and and sure enough, they respected his idea, but of course, one thing they didn't do is revealing their strategy, because that is one rule they in the both teams had not to do, because if they did, well, their plans for a winnery to win against the other team and against each other would have been almost foiled and almost immediately. But as it started, the game started. Tony led his team against the others, and soon as over here, said Jack, and they pushed and pushed for back and forward. By the end of the afternoon, it stood 10 against 9. It turns out Jack's, Mark's, and Tony's team finally won the game. 
and that everyone in the audience is cheering for their victory. Even after the game was over, the coach of the other team actually walked over to, to Jack and the others and just thanked them for a good match. And even the other team Leonard players also walked over, shake hands and said, well, you guys really beat us this time again. How do you do it? Uh, you know, team practice. You know, uh, we may have to, had to follow your examples of the team members and laughed. But as Don Jack or at least Mark had said only that, uh, some time earlier, that there might have been some scouts telling scouts for media at the school. But it turns out there wasn't any. And since Mark said that it might be just a rumor or just some talk that he overheard, but it turns out there wasn't any at all. And Jack was not even not surprised, but even Tony wasn't so surprised himself. This was just a friendly school game, and there might have been some uh, scouts from other, other schools if it was just a, a big game or like a state championship or maybe as a national game, something like that. Just anything like bigger ones. But after this school, was this game was over, and Jack and the others had all driven home by his parents, Tony was standing by his car just by himself, getting ready to get home. When suddenly someone actually called him behind, Tony, and he turned around and saw Kelly with Molly. Oh, uh, hey Molly, Kelly, do you guys need anything? Um, well, you just want to say congratulations for the game. Oh, thanks. And, um, we were just asking, or at least wondering, if you maybe want to hang out? I would like to, but I am so tired of that game. I'm sorry, but I would have liked to enjoy your company, though, but... Uh, I will need to have to get home to get some rest. Yeah, no, we understand, though, said Kelly, with a smile. But, once again... Congratulations for the game. Thanks. But even though that after when he was driving home, he had something on his mind that this was something that Kelly had something to ask him, or maybe she had planned for something, but she could he could put it put it there. But as the week the next week came and went, things actually started back to normal. Because only about the on the next week, all the school did were just talking about this game and how this went, or how it could have been better, or something like that. They talked about the game's leaders and and everything, tactics, and even though that Tony and his friends were just really proud how this game even turned out, they were all happy. But it was something else though, because now that this game was over, everyone was focused on the next game, or at least not the thing that's going to happen. And that was the big test. And since this test was only about another, was supposed to be only two weeks after the game. And now, everyone was actually very eager and a little bit nervous how this, how this test was going to be. And since what they was supposed to be over, this test is going to represent 50% of the final scores at, this, at their grades. And everyone was very eager and very nervous how they was if they gonna fail, they may have to go over to some summer school for the whole summer. And Tony, he wasn't that much worried. He knew that he will pass the test. Even though he tells his friends Jack, Mark, and the others, like in his team, if they need any help, call them, text them, he will help them. And of course, something but like that would help. But as it knows, two other weeks went, and then the big test came. Everyone was really excited. They were really excited about this test, but also big nervous. Tony, he was sitting in the classroom with Jack, Mark, Nikki, Kelly, and her friends, and among others, hoping to get this test passed. But even deep down, he didn't have to worry though, because he's an A plus student. Even though he may get some maybe a B or maybe a B plus or B minus, but he was always a good positive views on this. But after the school was over or the test was over, 
the all the other students was excited, both nervous, so was waiting, hoping they might pass the test. But only a few days later, after the days we were supposed to get the test back, everyone was in the classroom, getting all the tests, and Mark passed with an A. And Tony and Jack all twice passed with an A also. Wow, I'm glad that I passed this one, said Mark. I would have been mad if I didn't pass at least, for least my parents would never say. My mom said, if you don't pass, I will take your Xbox, Xbox for a month. Wow, that was brutal, said Jack with a smile. Well, you know, she wouldn't even do that, said Tony. No, but... She wouldn't be happy if I didn't have the at least pass this test at all. Because um, if I don't, I would not have the air of it. I wouldn't have been here hear the end of it, said Mark with a smirk. And then, Kelly, you also had an A plus this time. Oh, and so like her friends. But then, as Nikki had passed hers, and but then, suddenly, a knock on the door. That was the principal. Oh, Principal James. Uh, this is one unexpected, said the teacher. Yes, I am here too to ask Miss Nikki to come with me. Oh, uh, is something wrong, Principal? Yes, um, I had got a, an ominous tip that you had cheated on this test. Everyone looked at Nikki. And even including Tony and his friends. They was like, what? There's no way that she had been cheating on this test, said Mark, silently. There's no way, said Jack. I mean, I know she's an A student, and she has never cheated on it, anything like this. She has never been accused of anything like it. I know, said Tony. But listen, let's, let's then Principal James continued. Please, everyone, silent. This is something that I took seriously. If I hear a student has been cheating on a test, I'm not taking it lightly. So Miss Nikki, if you please, come with me to my office. Now. And Nikki stood, sat there first only a few seconds, and shamely. And as she walked away with Principal James, everyone's, after they left, everyone started whispering to each other. How can this possible happen? said most of the students. There is no way. Everyone knew that she was a good student, never been in a problem with its teachers or the principal. But at this tip, as Principal James said, no one else could not be much serious about this. But as though later on in the principal's office, Nikki's parents was there, and he said, Nikki, I know you're a good student. But being blamed or accused for not being seen in this, like this is unheard of, especially with your character. I know that you are a very good student, always here, good student, a student. But being accused of being cheating on a big test? I'm shocked. Can you make try to explain? But with Principal James, you know, like you said, I've never cheated only in a test that before. So why would I even do now? And how did he even know that I was blamed for this? I mean, is there any evidence? Yes, there is. A, an anonymous tip told my off my secretary that someone in the, this school had been cheating on this for this big test, had all the right answers. At first, I wouldn't even believe it. But answers that the anonymous tip told exactly who it was. Oh, and do you know who told you? No. I said, like I said, anonymous. But the tip said, we will find that she tests the answers in your locker in this day. And at first, I didn't want to believe it. But I had to look at this into my matter to really consider if there's any possibility that you have a heating. But principal, let me finish. Please. I went to your locker with the janitor and we opened. And made sure it's right not. It's right sure we did find. I was hoping not to find anything like this been you've been accused of. And sorry to tell you, 
we did find a paper with all the right answers on in your MacBook and your name on it. And your writing, the writing match almost identical to your own. But Principal James, I would never, please. I know this might be a shock, but right now you are suspended for a week until this matter is taken care of. Please, your parents will be here, here to take you home. So I can't take the rest of the day if it is cold day? No. As this matter, you are now suspended for a week. But trust me, Nikki, I will look into this matter quickly. That is, if we find some more evidence proving that you are innocent, we will let your parents know, and this matter will not be marked in your record. But, Principal James, but believe me, I will never do anything like it. There is nothing else I can do. My hands are tied at this moment. Please, go with your parents. I will attend that update them as soon as possible I have any more evidence or any more information. At that moment, the rest of the school bell rang for the next class. But as Nikki was walking by the classroom, by her parents, she looked so ashamed she was almost about to cry. As Tony, Mark, and Jack saw this, they were like, there is no way. And after that, everyone was talking about this first of the day, but including Jack, Mark, and Tony. Especially Tony could not even believe this. He was a good friend of Nikki. She is an A student for all sake, he said. Who would even try to blame her? Jack, can you maybe ask around to see if anyone has any clue who could be done it, doing this? Well, I can do my best, said Jack. And Mark, I own it. Thanks. I like. I know I can trust you too. But please, just be try to be careful what you're asking, because if the person knows if we asking around about this, they might start to figure out plans or some other false evidence. Please, just ask someone that you know may have some information or anything that may prove this is innocent. Both nodded and left. So the rest of the day, they both walked around the school asking only a few people they knew they could trust it, including their own team members. But no one had no answer or any evidence that may happen, or any suspected any. They even asked if they suspect anyone could be doing this, but no one had any idea who could have done it. After school was over, Tony drove home, drew home to Nikki's parents' home. Asked if they could if they could talk to them, and they were both surprised to see that see Tony there. Hey, uh, is Nikki home? Yeah, she is in her bedroom, but she doesn't want to come down. Can I come in? Yeah, of course," said Tony. Said Nikki's dad. Um, so, what what brings you here? Well, I have a suspicion that someone at the school is framing Nikki on this. Both her, both Nikki's parents looked at each other and assumed the same thing. But we don't know exactly why anyone will frame our daughter," said his, her mom. She is always a good, good, kind girl, and she has no problem in school at all. No records of anything at all. Any of that. Maybe it is because of her being bullied. Both her parents looked at each other. Bully? Our daughter? Just, you must be wrong, Tony. Our daughter has not even been born at this school. Wait, she hasn't even told you? Told us what? Tony was so speechless. But he had no idea how to reveal this to her parents. But now she knows that she might something be wrong. Tony, please. If you know something, please tell us. Tony, at first didn't want to tell, but now when he has somehow revealed that she may be bullied. <sighs> yes, it is true. Nikki has been bullied in school. But for how long? Said the parents at the same time. For over a year. Over a year? Said her dad. This is unbelievable. She had never mentioned any of this to us. 
Why? Maybe she was too scared how he would even react. But has anyone ever stand up against the cat? No. And then Tony told them the story about the other student who did. What? What happened? This other student stood up against the bullies once, and they targeted him as well. It was so terrible. What, what happened? He couldn't stand it anymore, so he asked his parents to transfer to a different school. That happened? And Tony just nodded slowly. I can't believe it. Our only daughter has been bullied by over a year. And do you know who could have done it? Yeah, yes, I do. And I've seen it many times. And you haven't even stopped them? I mean, I would have. But there was nothing I could have done. Wait. Before you even get mad, though, I will, reveal, I will tell you exactly why. Not because I that student had to drop out of different change of school. No, it's not because of that. It's because even if I would tell the principal or any other teachers, this bully and her this bully's friends, they will tell the different story, telling me I'm being spreading lies and about this build bully and everything. This is unreal, said his parents. This is unreal. So, you know who's been doing this? Yes. It is someone you know? Yes. It is. But do you think she could have done anything like this before? I mean, bullying and taking it a different step? What, what is that exactly are you referring to, sir? Um... Do you think this bullies could have taken the next step and might maybe accuse our daughter of cheating for this test? That was one thing that Tony never even thought of. Could Kelly and her friends taking this step next one too far by accusing Nikki of cheating on this test? That I did never thought of though. I I really Never thought of that, but I mean, I could tell the principal about it, but he will tell me I needed some proof of any of this, and I can't just go around accusing her or the other bullies that have been doing this. I need evidence first, of course. But as the principal said that that her writing on this note was identical to hers, is it possible? Maybe that the person had copied her writing for some reason. But that would make a lot of skill to do it, isn't it? Said Nikki's mom. Yeah, but I don't know exactly who could have done it. Said Tony first, until he realized maybe Kelly is the one. I don't know what to do though, said Tony first. I mean, I will tell her. I will, can I talk to Nikki? You can try. She doesn't want to talk to us, though. And so Nick, Tony went up to Nikki's room and knocked on the door. I want to talk, said she's crying. Nikki, it's me, Tony. Can I come in? Tony, what are you doing here? Can I come in? Yeah, door's open. So he went in, sat down on the, on the chair next to her bed, and they started talking. So, that is the reason why you're here. Yes. This is one thing that anyone has ever done. So you think Kelly and her friends can have done it? This is only answer I can even think of. But for what reason? They never even do anything about me. I mean, they know that they've been bullying you for a year. Your parents know. You told them? Yeah. They needed to know, and especially what happened to other student has to stand up against them. You know what happened? She nodded. Yeah, I heard. I cannot stand against to see them do the same thing to you. 
I mean, seeing you be transferred to different school for what they did, it is unlike any of this. Please, I will prove you that you are innocent, even if it means my own my own reputation and reputation is damaged. No, I can't stand to do that. It is decided. I will prove you are innocent. And then he said, I will prove it. I will. Then he went home. And that's when he was in home. His parents was in home that time. So he went to his, kid, his own bedroom and then called Jack and Mark. Guys, please tell me, have you found any evidence or anyone's willing to tell us how it can be done? But Jack said, no. No one has seen or heard anything. Mark? Mark was silent for a moment. Well, I may have found something. What is it? Well, I heard from the secretary that Molly was in, the, in this office only about a few days earlier, or about maybe one day earlier before the big test. Wait, what was she been doing there? Well, she had a meeting with the principal. Yes, for what about this prom dance, this dance, she was part of the school community of that. All right, that makes sense. So you think that she may have looked into the test, copied the answers, and took them? It's possible. But if it's true, we need more evidence. Maybe we don't need that. What do you mean? I mean, if she did have to save the test or the writings, would that prove enough? Well, said Yak. I mean, that short would be enough evidence, but it needs more, said Jack. Hmm, what else could we do? Nikki's very devastated about this. I mean, she has never been accused of anything like it. I mean, if ever anyone did the same to my friends, like you or Mark, or anyone else, I would be devastated, but I would prove them innocent. Wait, I know what. What is it? If Molly had this writing on her by hand, or at least read down by hand quickly, she may have that kept the, 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 that paper in her locker. That's true. She never, we both know that, we all know that she doesn't even mostly, she doesn't ever empty her locker at all. So, we may find it. But, please, now we have this, don't talk anyone else, anyone else, okay? Yeah, promise. But the next day, just before the first, during the first class, Mark and Jack was told by Tony that he will skip the first class and go straight to the principal. But they both know that he should wait after the first class, and they agreed. So after the first class was over, Tony went straight to the principal's office. Oh, and hey, Tony, said the security, uh, secretary. Hi, um, is... Principal James available? I need to talk to him, but it's quite urgent. Quite uh, urgent. Yeah, he has no meetings or anything that so so she called him. Principal James? Yes. Uh Tony is here to talk to you for a moment. Let him in. Ah, Tony, how is our star player captain? He said a smile. That game was a really interesting, said Principal. Thanks, Principal. Oh, so what can I do for you? Well, you know that this incident about Nikki and this big test? Ah, uh, yeah. Can I ask, have you made any progress about it? I understand you're really very passionate about your friends, especially their, their grades and their reputation. And I like it with you. I was shocked. But, Principal, please, have you made any progress, any evidence, or anything? No, sad we haven't. Well, I might have some evidence that might prove that she is innocent. Oh, so how did you find out? Well, this is might be different to explain, but I had my two friends, Mark and Jack, to ask around to some students to see if they know anything that or have not done it. And they didn't find much, except they may have come across one uh crucial evidence that may be, may not be that much important. Oh, let me know. 
Well, Molly was in your office the day before the big test, right? Yes, she was here. You were talking about this upcoming dance with her, since she's part of communi uh, community. That is correct. Anything else you want to mention? Well, my friends believe that she may have been been here when you were not in the office and copied the F the test result. I mean, we all know, but that you had the result in your office as as the most best case place to keep it, and it is almost impossible for the student to just walk in here without the security secretary to find it. Um, that's true. So you expecting me to say that Molly copied the test and and uh, she planted that in her in Nikki's locker and uh, yeah, but that also would not know that. But since no one else in the school knows her combination to her locker, and only that you and other and the secretary had a copy of the right lock combinations, she may have even looked that up and copied that combination as well. And that explains some of the most easier way to do it. That's true, my son. Uh, but the same, why do you think she could have done it? Well, maybe not turned down, but I realized Molly would not do anything like this because she had no agenda against Nikki. Well, except maybe one of her other friends. Who? Kelly. Kelly? Are you saying that Kelly is the one who has been doing this? Well, there is one other thing that you may have to also know. This has happened longer before you in this. Oh, what are it going to be? Kelly, Molly, and Sarah have been bullying Nikki for over a year. And this, this has never come to my attention. Please, continue. Well, that's it. They have been bullying her for over a year. But, have they even uh, like, hurt her in any way? No, not the physical though. They only like, verbally abused her, bullying her, calling her some kind of bad names or anything like it. And I have seen it many times. And including my friends. We have seen her doing it. She had even trapped her in the lawn in the cafeteria a couple of times, blaming her for had clumped her feet. Uh, just we need her to stop. And I know the school has no tolerance for bullying. And you know that the student that they transferred to another school. Uh, yes, I heard of the story. Yeah, he is one of the students who had also been bullied by Nikki, or by Kelly and her friends," said Tony. This is unbelievable," said the principal. "But I'm glad you team came this to your attention. So, what else did you want me to do? Well, me and my friends know that Molly usually don't clean her locker that often. So it's possible that she may have kept the first original note of her, the test result and the combination in her locker. If you find that paper, then you have all the evidence for true and sure that Nikki." is innocent, and that she had been framed by Kelly and her friends. Alright, I will look into it. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know it. You're welcome. So, after that, Tony went back to class, and by the lunch break, asked Tony and the other of the senior, so, did you tell him? Exactly what I did to tell. But then, suddenly, the speaker. Can Miss Kelly and Sarah and Molly come to my to the principal James' office, please? Everyone just looking. Everyone just talking when suddenly the speaker came on. Everyone just looked and turned around and looked at And they were just shocked. Even though this never actually had happened before. But they repeat again. Can Miss Kelly, Sarah and Molly can come to the principal's office, please? So they stood up and just walked by the students who, they didn't say any word, just looked at the surprise look at her. But as to them, as to that, just after that, Tony, Mark, and Jack was just walking by the office, just by on the next pass when he heard some loud sounds, loud voices, and they could just stand, they stopped there and heard. Miss Kelly, Molly, and Sarah, I cannot believe how low you can stole going to this. 
It caught to my attention. All of you have been bullying all of one of the students. One of the top students, in fact. Have you anything else to say about these accusations? Well, speak up. The principal was so angry, it was almost screaming in it. But the secretary told him to calm down. Even though they couldn't even exactly hear what the girl said back, but they, something like, I, I'm sorry, principal, but he, they didn't have any right will anything else to say except, we are sorry. But then Sarah said, well, at first I didn't even want to do anything like it. Principal, please, principal, believe me, I have no idea what Kelly had to die, planned to do. She only said that she wanted to punish or maybe get revenge against Nikki. But she didn't tell exactly what her plan was until she, when she, well, well at least when Molly came back with the answer on her. It was then when she, she showed us that, that paper with the answer and her lock, lock combination on it. When Kelly realized what the big plan could do. So Molly, is it true? But Molly, tell me, is it true? said the principal James. Yes. I mean, even though Kelly never told us what she had planned for revenge, so when so when I was in your office and I came to realize after you, you left for a moment, I I took your the result, test result and copied the answers and even found Nikki's locker combination of the dumbest file on the paper and and even though Kelly never even know about this idea, this is actually my idea at least. When I told her this idea and she was like, Well, there's no way we can do that. I mean without the test result or even the combination to locker. But then I showed her paper and said, I only got that. And she asked me how. But then I told her I was in my in your your office and you were away for a moment and I wrote it down and she smiled and said, This will give me my revenge against her. But as Molly said that, Kayla Kelly looked even more embarrassed and started to crying. cry. Huh, so that is the what has happened. Well, said Principal James, but more calmly, but even more loud tone. I had already told your parents to come here. Wait, what? said Kelly. No, please. Can't we just try to forget it? Maybe give us suspension or anything. Said Caleb, but not start to cry more. It is too late. And then there's a knock on his door. Ah, let me spit out. Come in, door's open. And it was right. Both Caleb's parents, Molly's, and Sarah's parents walked in, and they had already been told exactly what happened. And none of them looked happy. Even though they could, only that Tony and Jack and Mark could hear from outside, hearing Kelly's dad's voice booming inside, even from the office, between two of the closed doors. Kelly! How dare you! I thought we raised you better. How dare you do accuse an identity student for this? When you get home, you will be grounded for two weeks. No TV, no shopping for two weeks. You hear me? And Kelly was stunned. Because None of her parents has never reacted this way, after all. But her mom said, Kelly, I cannot believe my own daughter doing this. And especially accusing another, a kind student like Nikki. Her parents know about her. Her parents knew about Nikki, and as they've already heard about him from principal, she is a kind and well, well hard work student. And it's not only that, but hearing our own daughter being bullying and not student for over a long time? How dare you all doing this? I thought we raised you to not be of that kind of person. I cannot even believe it. What your dad said, your punishment will be effectively. And not only that, said the principal. You will also get some severe punishment for this. 
and girls would not expect what. You three girls will be suspended for two weeks. Two weeks, said Sailor. That's unfair. Unfair? What you and your friends did to school towards Nikki? Do you think that's un un unfair? She was suspended for a week and being accused from cheating a test could have made her losing her scholarship or anything like that possible and she could have been expelled from school. I could have done even worse. I'm willing to give you a suspension for two weeks. You know, all this security, all this incident, this severity, I could have suspend not only suspended you, but I could have expelled all of you for all this severity. Both Molly, Mal Kelly, and Sarah looked at each other and started crying. They realized the principal game them not safely. He could have just expelled them from this, from what they did. Please. And as a second part of the punishment, you three will help in the kitchen, in the school of the cafeteria for a week, helping to serve the food for them. What? said Molly. That is just unfair too. It is, but it is what happens. My word is final, and your parents all had agreed on this. And their parents, they looked at their parents, who just looked angry, but they all nodded. And, and, the test result on your score, it would have been, is gonna be removed. And, you may have taken the test again, said the principal with an angry tone. But, see from this. I have given you a very good chance to prove yourself. I could have expired all of you right this moment, but I'm willing to give you a chance. I, as the principal, are willing to give you, three girls, a chance to improve yourself. But if I hear any other update of any such bullying or anything other than severity, I will not hesitate to expire, expel, any of you from the school, and I will tell those schools, your the college you three have been considering to go to, to explain, explain to them about your severity. And that is my final warning, girls. Remember this: any other severity, I will, ex I will expel three of you from this school. The girls just looked at the principal, stunned, but were crying, but they all nodded and realized they had been giving a very much good option. If not, the principal would not hesitate to expel Sarah, Kelly, and Molly from school permanently. But they all nodded. After that, the principal said, you girls will follow your parents home as the third suspension start right now. So the girls just stood up and went to the parents silently from the hallway. As they entered the walkthrough, I just stood and saw them. And Kelly saw Mark, Jack, and even Tommy. They didn't smile or grin or anything towards her. They just stood there, blankly faced with a big shocked face. Hearing exactly what heard from the office. And just. And Tony. He looked down and said, I'm sorry. And she realized that she knows something that he already knew what was happening. But now in her mind, not know, now knowing that Mark, Jack, Tony knew what has happened long before it even happened. She was not going to do anything against that. Because what the principal said, he had the right to expel them from the school what she did and her friends did. But was willing to give them a second chance. She would not want to jeopardize that second option. So the rest of the week and the next two weeks afterwards, Tony, Mark, and Jack gathered. They were just moved on. Even though there was only only the only day after what has happened, 
but the whole school. Every student knew exactly what happened. And only then, the day after, Nikki came back to school, and everyone started cheering her for supporting herself. And she literally walked up to Tony, Mark, and Jack in the hallway and said, Thanks. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, said Mark. We stood and we stand up for each other. That's right, said Jack with a smile. No one has never been accused for this wrongdoing. Tony said, Look, this would end up to Mark for themselves. They brought them up this up themselves, not us. And we cannot stand to see anyone else in the innocent have been accused for anything. And for that, we are grateful that you did, given this right opportunity, had to be proving that you were innocent and nothing else. She smiled and said, thanks, and then she gave all of them a hug and went away. But as the two weeks passed, both Kelly, Molly, and Sarah were allowed to come back to school after the suspension for two weeks. But after that, most students preferred not even to have anything involved with them, not even talk to them, not even want to look at them. But that was what is something they realized. They all know that this was something that didn't happen to them. After what it did, this not explaining why the people were not even want to spend any time with them. And they all knew it. So they tried to stay away from any other problem. But deep down, Kelly wanted to have some sort of revenge against Nikki, or at least this time Tony. But she couldn't do it, knowing that if this came out, she would be expelled from school. So she didn't want to dare anything. So after all this, things were starting looking towards better for Nikki and Tony and the others. But after a while though, everyone slowly soon eventually forgot about what happened and moved on from this big incident. And a month that passed, and the school was getting closer and closer. Even though that most others had only found someone to date with, but at least brought them as a friend date or anything, Mark, Jack, had found a girl they were going to date. But Tony, he didn't have to ask anyone, or anyone other girls had even asked him yet. But, but as he was sitting in the, in the lounge hall, in the cafeteria, Kelly walked up to him and asked, Tony? Hmm? Oh, uh, hey Kelly, um, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure, what is it? Tony was sitting by himself since Jack and Mark already had finished their lunch and went off. Um, since the school dance is soon and I'm still wondering if you have asked anyone yet? No, I haven't. I had totally forgot about it. Oh. Um. Would you maybe consider going with me to the prom, to the school dance? After what happened earlier, about a month earlier, with this big incident, Tony had to even consider to even talk to her anymore, or even even go to the dance with her. But but he was not even willing to do anything. But he said, Kelly, after what happened a month ago. I know what happened. Please, give me a chance to prove myself. I can feel better. Kelly, listen. Even long before all this, if you had been kind to Nikki, I would have easily not hesitate to even ask you out on a date to the prom or the dance. But now this, after you have been bullying her for over a year, even though all that has stopped now, she said. I mean, sure. I could have gone with you, but I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that I am. I not want to go with you to the school dance. And that made her stunned and start crying. But I thought you'd be giving you a chance. I am giving you a chance to prove yourself. But what you did hurt me much more than it hurt Nikki. Sure, she's a kind person, but I know you for a long time, and. What you did hurt me, and especially when you framed her to be, be on cheating for the test, it hurt even me more. 
And he's not a crying cell, but try to hold it in. Kelly, I've known you for so long, and I expect you to be a good person. What happened to you? Back in middle school, you were really friendly to everyone. You didn't even consider you pick up Polia then. But since high school, all the change. Believe me, I cannot stand anything like it. So I'm sorry. I'm not going with you to the dance. I'm sorry. And then he stood up and just walked away. Kelly felt hurt. But she starts saying to herself, I can't believe it. And Molly and Sarah later walked up after hearing what happened. We are sorry to hearing about this. I can't believe it. I thought he would give me a second chance even after all this. Well, can you blame him? said Sarah. I mean, after all this, I, I don't blame him for not being the one amount of going with you, said Molly. I mean, this isn't your fault, Molly, said Kelly, angry. My fault? It was your idea that you wanted to get revenge on Nikki. Yeah, but not like this. If you had even took those tourist paper from the, from the office, none of this would have even happened. Said she angry. But this time, there were no other students in the, in the cafeteria. They were all alone. Please, to spare me your angry toward me, said Molly, angry back. I'm all the deep you thought maybe was going to help you. If you had at least told me your any possible idea what you want to do for revenge, I never even have done even thought of doing this. Listen, both of you, said Sarah, this is not time to argue. Look, we also have been friends for a long time, right? Yeah, said Molly, a little bit still angry. If you had any idea what she was even had idea of what to plan to do, would you have done it? Depending on what kind of plan revenge she had done. Please, spare me your kind words, since not Kelly a bit angry still. But Kelly, no telling me, said Kelly. Listen, I only want to try to say this. If you still want revenge against Nikki or Tony this time, try the least to do it in some less unsuspected manner. Because if you want to plant anything against Tony or Nikki this time, don't expect me or Mom to help you. We don't want to take the big risk to be expelled from school and not being able to apply for college or university afterwards. Because you know this will end in our record. Fine, if you don't want to help me with revenge or anything, stay away my way, said Kelly angry and she just walked off. From that day on, Molly and Sarah told themselves and to each other not to have anything involved with Kelly ever since again. And that they were right. Because from that day on, they stopped hanging around with Kelly. Everyone was stunned, hearing what that Kelly never did had somehow kicked her friends out of the group. But Kelly, she was planning something, but not a much, much big revenge against Kel or Liz Nikki. But at least from that home. But the same afternoon after school was over, Tony went over to the, to the spot on the sidewalk when she saw that Nikki was still standing there. Hey, Nikki, uh, oh. Tony, hi. Um, can I ask you something? Yeah, my mom is in here, so I can get, I can go with you with a little lift home. <laughs> well, that was not what I was going to ask you. Oh, well, well, that and something else. Oh, what? Would you like to go with me to the dance as my date? Well, we can go as friends if you want to. Oh, um, yeah, I would like that. Good. Um, I'll pick you up at your your place around 4 p.m. Yeah, sounds good. And then he took her home, though. And only a few days after, Nikki and Tony, they were actually happy still to be friends, though. But just what after that same day, Tony had told both Mark and Jack all about this. 
So you two are gonna date, huh? To the prom or dance? Both said a little bit smirk and laughing. As a date, date? <laughs> no, 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 no. She don't just like laughing. We both agreed to just be friends on a date. That's all. Ah, right, sent Mark with a wink. No, I'm serious. Both his friends actually heard the tone that he was serious. I didn't ask her to be on a date, date, only for dating as a friend, okay? I thought maybe that someone else could date, had asked her, but no one else did. Well, who knows? Maybe you two will end up dating eventually, said Jack with a grin. Well, if that happened, I would be like, holy. Those two actually end up dating, said Mark with a smile and laugh. Well, if they do, you will owe me 50 bucks, said Mark, Let's said Jack in a smirk. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll lay a bet you bet. If he start dating her, the person will alone lose a bet will earn the person 50 bucks. You're on. Mark and Tony said, Oh, brother, you too. Can you never stop make any bets about my life? <laughs> he said with a smirk. Well, what do you do? said Mark. We always do something. <sighs> you too? We'll eventually have something else to bet on. Well, what else? I don't know. Who will never win against the next one in the game? Against Mark and me? Said Jack. Aha. Uh -huh. Very funny, said Mark. You only bought only one against me one time, and that's it. You'll never do it again. Aha, uh -huh. really, said Mark, said Jack again. Will will beat you. That's what's third of it. All right. Who knows, said Mark. And they both just laughing again and talked about something else. And then. And then the day came for the dance. Tony went to Nikki's home and walked in after he knocked on the door. You look very handsome, Tony, said Nikki's dad. Uh, thank you. Um, is she ready? She will be downstairs in a few minutes, said Nikki's mom. And she was right. In a few minutes, Nikki came down, walking down the stairs. As he saw her the first time in the dress, he felt like his heart stopped beating for a few seconds. Wow, you look uh, gorgeous. Thanks, she smiled. You can call handsome yourself. Well, this is all the thing. <laughs> Are you ready? She nodded, and they both left her part to the to the party for this dance. Both Nikki's parents looked at each other, and his her mom said, "Not surprising if those two would end up dating." No, that's true. I mean, uh, he is a quite handsome young man, and uh, he stood up for her against this incident over a month ago. You remember? Yeah, I do. And, you know, it would not surprise me if they start dating, though. I mean, there would be a huge couple. You agreed on that one. And at this dance, though, everyone actually had a good time dancing, enjoying some conversation with the other and having the good snacks. Even though the principal James was there and a few of his teachers, just to make sure that something would just nothing happened. And the dance went perfectly well for the next couple of hours. And before this was to end, Kelly was actually standing by the, by the wall. Even though she didn't have a date to dance, but she danced by herself or maybe talked to some other people there. But even though that some people had it, really been, had even had forgiven her, but eventually some had, but not all of them. But at the time, she saw that Nikki dancing with Tony or Mark or even Jack. She felt she felt angry towards what happened. She still still believed that Nikki and Tony had been a couple, or at least for a while now. But when she asked around, everyone everyone said no. They're not even dating at all. In, in the end, she didn't even believe any of those people said if they were dating. I mean, she said, if they are dating, they maybe not, not tell, told you about it. Kelly, do you think Tony would even kept anything like that secret? He has never done anything like it, sir, says one of the other people. He has always been a kind person, and if the they are dating, she will be lucky, said one of the other people. 
dare you to even tell that or even say that like to me? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm more me than you than her. But other people said, well, if that is true, I mean, it is his, it probably his decision to realize if he will want to date you or her. It's up to him, not you. You can't decide if he's who has the right to date him. And Nick, she was actually feeling lucky to have someone like Tony and others as a date or anyone like to help help her, especially what happened a month ago. But as the pro this dance was getting closer to end, Kelly, she walked up to 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 Tony and Nick, Tony and asked if she could have a dance. Even though Tony himself was not was much going to have much much involvement with Kelly afterwards, but he agreed to at least one dance. And she tried to like talk to him sweetly, tried to win his heart over it. But her trials meets and almost end up ending blocks. But eventually, just after dance was over, Kelly saw that Nikki was walking up to them with something to drink. Oh, um, I didn't know you were dancing with Kelly. Well, she asked for dance, so I couldn't deny her, said Tony. Yeah, so you can walk away. He's my date now to this prom, to this dance. Excuse me? Said Tony with a, excuse, with a bit of shock look. What? I'm not your date? No, I'm here with Nikki. You know that. But I thought you liked me more than her. Kelly, I told you. I don't like you the same way anymore. Or I never did. I mean, if you had been kinder all along, before all these incidents happened, I could have given you a chance, but you know. How dare you? And then she grabbed one of the drinks from Nikki's hands and threw it in his face and said, You are a piece of shit. You know that? I will never want to even dare to talk to you anymore. You are the worst guy ever. And you know, go ahead, date this stupid nerdy girl. I don't dare you anymore. And then Principal James saw it all happen. And as the music was was quite ended, Kelly! And she was like, <coughs> gulp. And her face turned blank and scared. And she slowly turned around and saw that Principal James was just walking fast towards them. And before she could say anything, Kelly, this is enough. I saw and heard every single word you said. I thought I'd given you a second chance to forget for the move from your house. Well, explain this. Uh, it was an accident. I was tripped and a little spell over here. A trip? said Principal James, angrily told. Everyone was staring at them. Even the other piece of even the DJ had just turned off on the music completely. Kelly, I give you a second chance. And now there's, please, Principal said Tony quickly. Just, please, don't say anything like that being expired, expelled her. Tony, said the principal, surprised. Let us stay at school. We all were finishing the school and eventually only about the next, in a few months, right? I want her to complete the school, not to drop being expelled or drop out. Please, give her a chance to say that. She hasn't even heard me or Nikki this time. This was only a drink. And it's not worth it being expelled from like that. All right, Nikki. If I heard anything else or have you seen anything like this happen again, I will not hesitate, without anyone saying except otherwise. You hear me? And Kelly just nodded and walked away. Nikki walked up to, to Tony with some napkins and, here, thanks. Are you sure giving her a second chance again? What you just did? Look, I know I should not have done it, but I'm not willing to let her still be thrown out of school because what she did. Sure, one of them was a month ago. Sure, I may not even say the word against it, but 
everyone is the one is is chosen to or at least willing offer to get a second chance. But listen, I just don't want to talk about it, but about but more about it. Okay, I just want to enjoy the rest of the evening there. After all, just this can be only be washed away in the washer back home. So don't worry. And are you sure? Positive. And that's even though, even though Kelly that had left the school even earlier, Nikki and Tony enjoyed the rest of the day though, and the rest of the evening. Even though when he took her home, he said goodbye, and she actually gave him a kiss on the cheek and said, Thanks. See you tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah. Even though when he went, went home, his parents were like, Tony! What happened to your suit? Oh, um, um, he had two options. Lie to his parents said that he had had an accident or maybe telling the truth. But he knew that his parents would not be happy if Kelly was to be the truth, honestly. So he said, oh, I had a little bit of an accident. Oh, well, at least I could be from being a cleaning washer. So put that in the basket in the bathroom, okay? Yes, that. So you had a good time? Oh, absolutely. Well, except for this accident, but I had a good time. That's good. Well, hit the bed zone. I will. So, the next couple of days, Kelly didn't show up much at school, though, because she decided to stay away from school for at least about two days. But otherwise, Tony, Nikki, and others, they were talking about this school and having a good time with it. But, one thing that never even came up though was when was when Eva was Kelly did. That part never came up though, because they didn't want to talk about it since there's not much more to talk about it. But Kelly, she later then showed up at the end of the week and she literally had moved on from the day incident. And she stopped, even stopped talking to Tony most of the time. But even though, a lot of times for Kelly and Tony's friendship had over the past several years back, they were only close. They were close friends. But since they both started high school, their friendship slowly drifted apart, but they still talked to each other for a couple of time. But now, it's like their friendship has been broken apart. And even eventually, something would happen. Because a month after the big dance had happened, it was actually around November this time, and everyone was getting ready for this Christmas event or this Christmas dance or something like that. There were some ideas to have a Christmas dance, theme school dance, or maybe something else, but since this school only had a dance a month earlier, so Principal James had decided maybe just have Maybe have a good, maybe have one day at the school or before, before the winter break to have, so that every school, everyone in the school can have some fun part, like a mini, like a type of carnival type themed, just having a, everyone could be in the gym, in gym hall, having a good time with singing, play games, or just, just goofing around to have a good time. And that was one of the things that he made as a good principal. And when that happened, everyone had a very good time. Just went to gym hall, just goofing around with friends, enjoying some snacks that they had been prepared for, and just enjoying some performance. And even though when Tony walked up to Principal James and said, Well, Principal James, you really undoubted yourself this time. He said with a smile. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. After all, this is all that my students need to have something relaxed before all that happened has past few months, you know, for this big incident. Uh, yeah, I you know, not mention it. I just want to say that you have a little out yourself this time. It's just seeing all of this, has, seeing everyone having a good time, it's, it's the best of it, you know? I remember what my dad told me when he was in, in his high school, as they never had this type of fun. The principal back then never even thought about doing this. He said with a smile. Yeah, I'm trying to teach my my possible future successor to be the same thing. Oh? 
Are you this time retiring? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not for many years, no. I just, same thing though. One day when I had to retire and someone else would be taking over my place and I will tell them exactly to do the same thing to follow my example, to be a good leader for the school. That's all. Yeah, that's true, said Tony with a smile. So, Tony, I have to ask you something. Oh? This girl, Nikki. What do you think about her? Well, she's a kind girl. Sweet, smart, a little bit shy. Why? Well, I had an idea about something I may have to tell you. Oh boy, what is it this time about Principal James? <laughs> now, you don't worry about them, Tony, said he's, he laughed. It's just that I have noticed when you spend time with Nikki, or this, this girl, she smiles a lot, blushing, and I don't know, maybe she has a crush on you. She? Crush on me? Well, if she does, she doesn't even, even mention it. Well, Tony, do you think a girl would even mention this every single time if they had a crush on you? And he thought for a moment. No, you may be right about that, said Tony. But, um, oh, you may have to head up though, because you should coming, what? And he turned around and saw that Nikki was actually walking up to him, holding a, a soda to him. Oh, here, I thought you maybe be touching first or something. Oh, um, thanks. Please, go on. What? Ask her, said the principal, and before he walked away. But, uh, Principal James, someday you may have to regret that. What was that? Oh, uh, nothing. Um, you want to play some games? Yeah, sure. And while they were playing games, he did notice how much he looked at him and blushed at and he won actually a teddy bear at one of those stands and gave it her. Here. Uh, me? Yeah, go ahead. You can take it. I, I don't know if I can take it. You won it. Well, you earn it. Earn it? Well, you know, that big test that I prepared a few months ago, and... And as a good personality, good friends are, have been so far. Is something wrong? Uh, no, nothing is wrong. He said and smiled and tried to act normally, but he was nervous. You know, you can tell me if something is wrong, though, Tony. <sighs> All right. Principal James suggested that you may have a crush on me, and I thought maybe that was just crazy, and that he told me maybe to ask you out or something like that, and... Wait, he said that? Ugh, yeah, you know. Principal James always wanted to mess around or joking around with his fellow students. He said with a short chuckle. Well, the truth is, I do have a crush on you. What? Since when? Ah, uh, after the school dance, though. So you have not a crush on me for about a month and you haven't told me? Yeah, I was afraid to even tell you though. I mean, I thought maybe you were not interested in me the same way back, so I never told you. Oh, Nikki, 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 please. You, you can always tell me anything. I wouldn't even be mad or just laugh with you at all this. Are you sure? Well, I am positive about that. So, yeah. Do you want to go out with me? Wait, are you asking me out? Tony asked. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sure. Great. We can go out on the movies on Friday. Um, 7 p.m. Uh, okay. Sounds good. You can pick me up at my home. Okay. Sure. So, when he actually walked around and just having more time to think, just talking, playing games, enjoying, enjoying company. When, when he was alone, Mark and Jack walked up to him and asked, So, you enjoy your time with Nikki? Uh, yeah, we are enjoying just talking, playing games, and she asked me out on a date, and she's playing some more games. Whoa, 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 whoa. She asked you out? Said Mark. Uh, yeah. Did I say that? Yeah, you did, said Jack. And are you serious? She asked you out? Said Jack again. Yes, I'm pretty much sure he did. So, what did he even add and say back? Said Mark with a grin, laying forward, like, hmm? Hey, dude, please 
Parcel space. All right. Uh, yes, yes. Send me your content movies on Friday. Oh wow, the first step for the date. Don't screw up this time, little dude. Since when did I screw up on a date? Uh, never. Since this would be like your actual first date ever. Ah, uh, good point. Good point, said Mark. This is Tony. You know, a lot of things are different this time, though. Well, who knows? Maybe you do screw up this time, and uh, maybe she didn't want to have to talk to you anymore, and you grew old, never get married, or hey, 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 don't go that far. Do you know the thing? I wouldn't even screw up any date. If I do screw up my date with, with Nikki, I would try to apologize and maybe to ask her out a distant different time, and maybe choose a different thing. Not a thing to do. <sighs> Here's a point, Jack, said Mark to Jack. Since he never did actually been asked out before, well, I have been, but mm, wasn't even interested, in said Jack. This is Tony. Good point, good point. Anyways, well, hope you get to have good fun. Uh, don't bribe me that much, said Tony back with a smile. You know, things look well look forward to back to me better for you. Hmm, good point, good point. Well, let's enjoy the state today, though, said Tony with a smirk. Yeah, let's do it. So the rest of the day, they actually did have a good time. And sure, Tony actually enjoyed the rest of the day at school and even looked around to see if he saw Nikki. And when he did, she smiled and nodded and he nodded back in. And when he came home, he did tell his parents about this. And they both smiled and said, wow, that's a big step for you. Earns it, said his mom with a smile. So when do we expect to see your... Possible girlfriend over for dinner. Mom, we hadn't even been on a date yet, and you call her my girlfriend? Well, son, you may have to start calling your dad your girlfriend. Who knows? Maybe she will be your ass. And his dad may have a point, Tony said to himself. Well, I may ask her after the first date to see us to see, but you know, I only do that even if we are. The first date is successful, right? Sounds good, deal. So when Friday came, Tony went over to, to Nikki's home, just knocked on the door, and she stood there in a cute outfit. And was like, oh, you're looking amazing tonight. <laughs> you too. Both her parents just nodded, and, and he, even though his, her father gave him a thumbs up, and he nodded back and said, be able to say, be home early, and if you don't, we know where to find you. He said, <laughs> Don't worry, Tony, we're only messing around. We know you'll take her home safely. Yeah, that's true. And they actually went to the movies, and they both sort of went to see a comedy movie, something new, for example, and they both actually had a good time. Despite that, they both were nervous, especially for Tony. This was actually his very first date, and he mentioned it to, to Nikki, and she was like, Mine too. Well, I have seen a lot of movies, TV shows, how days it could have been like, so I only imagine how long my dream date would be. Well, maybe this could be a dream date. Won't be another one, you know. And after the movie was over, both Nikki and Tony talked about the movie. They both talked about it was part good on it, wasn't maybe it could have been better, and just having a good time. Even though they were still around, maybe. 8 p.m. and after the movie was only about one hour long or something like that or when he's like oh 8 30 so one half <laughs> time flies passed by for us <laughs> yeah it does just Nikki smiled are you getting hungry matter of fact I am are you suggesting anything well I know there's a small diner not around the corner but maybe you can go there to have something to eat before you take it home sounds good so they went to the diner, ordered some some pasta, and and after that he took her home. But before outside her door, he asked if she maybe wanted to go out with her again, and she said yes, and then kissed him and thanked for this date. And after the came, when he came home, he called Mark and Jack just to get them have update what's happened on the dates. So, dude, how went the date? Said Mark with a grin. Did any? Fun happened, like kissing, hugging. Dude, 
This was my first state. Do you even expect me to do that kind of right away? Maybe, maybe not. Mark, said Jack. Listen, how did it went? Well, actually, it went perfect well. We had a good time. We laughed a lot. We saw this new comedy movie. And, um, well, she did hold my hand and do the movies. Oh, wow, that's the first step. Anything else? Well, we went to a diner that was across the corner. We just had something to eat and took it home. I asked her out again. She said yes. So, oh, man, this is the first step for you. Please, cut it out, Jack, said Mark, said Tony. Even though it's true, I just wanted this to be take it slowly. Yeah, that's true, Mark, said Jack back. Everything else. Well, Tony, well, it's a good thing to, to you know, go well for you between you two, and maybe hope for a better. Yeah, it's true. And shortly, after about a couple of weeks, they actually started to enjoy it more and more. Since the first date, they actually went to the second day to have dinner at a restaurant nearby, near, near in town. And after that, they actually started dating more and more. And after their fifth date, they decided to make it official. And it did. And everyone at school was actually supporting for them, especially his friends. But not only that. Um, Nikki? Yeah? Said, said Nikki, by the way, in school. Um, I had to ask you something. Oh? Um, my parents actually had an idea for, you know, if you want to come over for dinner, maybe on Friday. Oh. Um. Sure. I mean, I don't know mind. And, um, uh, this will be your first time, my first time to meet your parents, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's my official girlfriend, actually, but... Yeah, pretty much it. Well, I... I will be there, though. No? Yeah. See you then? Yeah. So, on Friday, Tony was so nervous when he was helping his mom prepare the kitchen. Please calm down, Tony. It's not like the world's ending. Well, it's like you, Vernon, is going to say, said Tony with a smirk. <laughs> I mean, I'm nervous how this is going to happen. I don't know if that has any bad jokes I've been telling or showing some pictures of my sister's a kid. Tony, is someone here at the door? Can you open it? Dad, I'm helping in the kitchen. Can you open the door? All right. You suit yourself. And he opened. Ah, here's my future daughter-in-law. And Tony laughed and just, oh, that place. And even his mom's like, you know, your dad is always like that. And you may have to expect him to be like it. Well, at least I hope you're not expecting to call my future, future wife so soon. Well, maybe one day though. Mom, please, you only be dating for a couple of some only for a short time. Do you expect me to marry her right away? <laughs> of course not. Maybe even after a few years, if you're long enough. I mean, if you're still dating after some time. <sighs> Mom, sometimes I do wonder if I even want to be related to both of you, said from Tony with his life. <sighs> Honey, it, it will go well, okay? And your dad's that I promise to behave his best. Well, the best he can, at least, said his mom with smirk. Well, at least I do not try to embarrass me or anything. And after that, the boat actually went into the dining room with its food and started enjoying dinner. So, Nikki, tell us, what do you have plans after your college is done? Um, maybe go to college? Any particular subject you're going to? Mm, not really. Well, I haven't even decided yet. So, have you any idea what type of college you're going to? Uh, community college or any? in college. Um, I had a few in mind, but I hadn't even decided yet or even applied for it yet. Ah, well, we might have to do soon. I mean, Tony hasn't even done it to say that. Please, college isn't not even that far away, though. Well, I, you know, college is not that far. For instance, by next year, you may have to start looking for any applying for different college or maybe university. Well, that's true, Mom, but I, right now, I just want to enjoy the college, the high school I have time left, okay? Fair enough. So, after they, the dinner was over, and even though 
Nikki stayed behind a little bit, maybe around a half hour, just to spend time with his family. So, how did it go? Did you enjoy my parents, especially my dad's craziness? Your parents are great. Dad is he's a bit goofy, but he's good. I like my parents, though. And this was actually not the first time, because... Tony had already been to her parents' home for first dinner for their parents maybe two weeks earlier. And there was a really good time. They were asking the same questions like if we had an, if he had any plans for college or university or his dream job would like be like him. Even though Cole, that Tony said that he were very much looking forward maybe to work in a business something or maybe start his own business, but he wasn't sure. He was maybe looking for to work as mechanic. Mechanic, his parents said. Her parents said, "That's not unexpected." Well, I wasn't sure yet, he said. But anyways, as their time went, Nikki and Tony enjoyed their dates, and their relationship was only going stronger and stronger and stronger for each single day. A couple of weeks later, the school was over for a winter holiday. Both Nikki and Tony were looking forward to Christmas since it's going to be their very first together as a couple. Even though Tony had already brought a necklace to Nikki as a gift, a necklace with a heart, and even Nikki herself had even bought a scarf for Tony as a gift. Even though they weren't been able to celebrate Christmas together this year, because since Tony and his parents are going to near neighbor town to celebrate with some of their relatives, so both Nikki and Tony had decided to spend the day the day before Tony had to go. So they were decided to be at her place. So, so Tony drove over to Nikki's home and knocked on the door, and it was her mom opened the door. She explained that Nikki wasn't home yet. She, she told him that she was went to the store to buy some things for her because uh, she will be back in a few minutes. So while that she let him in, they start to sit down in, in the living room, start small talking and uh, just to have a good time. But after that, she explained that Nikki will be back with the next 10, 15 minutes or so. But as they were talking, 10 minutes passed, 15 minutes passed, and then 20 minutes. Maybe there's a, a big line in the store, or maybe that she's walking a little bit slower because it's the maybe on the eyes on the screen sidewalk or something like that. It was actually good explanations, but after that, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Now she was only a half hour lower and half hour late. This was unusual, but as though Nikki's mom texted Nikki, nothing. She tried to call her, but then went straight to voicemail, nothing answered back. But as she was getting ready to open, to get to go find her by herself, she heard a knock on the door, and there was two officers. Hello, can I help you with something? Yes, is this the home of Nikki Smith? Smith? Asked the officers. Yes, um, I am her mother. Is something I can help you with? Yes, we are sending the form that your daughter had been in accident. But at the same time, Tony had just stand up and heard the that the officers at the door. So when he was just around the corner, heard that he, she and Nikki had been in an accident. My daughter in an accident? What kind? I um, had to sort to inform that she were on the sidewalk when this car approached her from on the street. It turns out this car slipped on the ice and... The driver tried to hit her, tried to avoid her hitting her, but it happens too fast, and I'm sorry to inform you. Is she? No, she is hanging in the hospital. That's for her injuries. That's all, as far as I know. But I'm sorry once again. Sorry for hearing you telling you this. I wish it had been better. Had it been better under better conditions. I'm sorry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. After the officers left, Nikki's mom fell on the floor on her knees and started crying. She couldn't even believe it. Her only daughter was in the hospital after this severe accident. As she was taking out her phone trying to call her husband, Nikki's dad, who was actually on his way home from work. Hello, honey? 
What? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't barely hear you. What do you mean? Nikki? Huh? What about her? Tony took the phone and explained it on the as best as he could. He was a little more calmer, even though he felt that to himself. Yes, sir. Um, your daughter had been in an accident. Tony? Y yes. Wait, what, what do you mean accident? Then he explained everything what the officers had just said. Okay, I'm on my way. I will be there within two minutes. I'll see you then. And he up. Two to three minutes later, my right to right on the way, Tony's, so Tony saw that Nikki's dad arrived. It didn't hesitate for a moment. They, Nikki's mom had put on a coat and hopped in, hopped in the car, and they, Tony had seen his own car, and they both took off to the hospital to, to have his mix, so to see, talk to the doctor what his happened. At the hospital, excuse me, we are looking for my daughter. She was in a car accident earlier today. And her name is Nikki Smith. Ah, uh, Nikki Smith, let me look inside. And then the, recep the receptionist looked at her computer screen. Ah, uh, she has been used up and taken into surgery. Surgery? And her mom faded. Oh dear. Sorry, she's just. She was just devastated for finding out that the daughter was just put in an accident, said Tony. Can you tell us exactly where she was taken? Or at least maybe call for a doctor who has been involved in this in this case. Certainly. And then the receptionist called for a doctor who has been involved in Nikki's case. And at the same time, though, where Tony and Nikki's dad took Nikki's mom to a chair to sit down as he started waking up from it after Fade fainted. I can't believe it. My only daughter is in an accident. Now it's surgery? It must be more severe than ever believe. As then, then the doctor arrived. Hello, are you Nikki Smith's family? Yes, we are her parents. How is she? How is her daughter? Asked her dad. I'm sorry to inform, but right after she was taken into hospital, she was directly taken to the surgery because as a condition of her severity. How severe? Asked her dad again, but with shiver his tone. She had a broken list, five ribs, and a severe concussion. She was all wrong unco unconscious when she got here. Is it is she gonna die? Asked her mom, but kind of crying more. It is too early to say. But as I arrived here, as is before I arrived kid here, she's just been taking off surgery over the next few hours. Can we go see her when one is over? Yes, but only for a brief moment. She will be taken to ICU at that right afterwards. Four hours later, they were leading to the ICU depart department and saw Nikki in the hospital bed, hooked up to some machines. Right away when Nikki's mom saw her, she just turned around her face against her husband's chest and started crying. She couldn't believe it. Her only daughter, lying there, hooked up to some machines and couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. So both her parents left the room because it was too much for them. But Nikki, Nikki's dad looked at Tony, who stood there, and... He then looked, turned around towards the doctor and asked, Can I stay for a moment? Of course. I'll let you know what I've done this time with the leave. So Tony went into the room, sat down next to Nikki's bed, holding her hand and couldn't believe it. Hearing all this big accident just happened only a moment ago, it felt like an eternity now. He sat there, and then he picked up his phone and called for Jack. Hey man, what's up? He was actually on the phone with Jack on FaceTime. Oh, just, I'm okay, I'm just in the hospital. Wait, what? You're in the hospital, dude? Said Mark in the background. It turns out Jack was over, over Mark's place and playing games. What? Are you serious? What happened? Are you okay? This is not me. Um, it's Nikki. 
Nikki, it, is she okay? And then Jack could see the machines in the background behind it. Wait, is she? No, she's safe for now, but doctor said that she is in critical condition, but stable for now. And I, I can't believe it. What happened? And then Tony explained what we have was told by the police officers and and doctor. I'm just sorry, man," said Doc, sounding sound sadly. "I cannot believe it myself. I never thought any of this like would happen to her. I mean, she's a strong girl. She will make it through it." Sonny smirked a bit, smiled, tried to make it happy, though. But even though the Tony could hear that, even Mark had a sad tone. I. <sighs> I know, Mark, but just listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, man," said Mark. She said Jack on a sturdy tone. "Listen, Nikki will pull through. She is a strong girl, like Mark said. She will make it. Believe me, she will." I don't know. Come on, man. Listen, Jack is right, and I'm right. She is strong. She will make it. Trust me. Said Mark with a smile. Hey, how about you come over to play some games or watch TV with us? Try to have done something else on your mind. I don't know. Come on, dude. It, at least have something else to do. There, there isn't much else you can do at this point. Right now, it is all you can do is wait for an even update. You're right, said Mark. Said Tony. I will be there in ten minutes. See you then, Amar. And then he called, hang up. He looked at Nikki for one last time before he threw. He went up to the doctor and asked, Please, can you promise me look after her as best as you can? The doctor promised and he said that he will keep her parents updated as much from the night as he could. Only about a moment later, he arrived to Mark's home, knocked on the door, and Jack opened. Come in, let's watch some TV earlier. They went to the basement to watch some TV. Even though Mark tried to be settled, or maybe tried to be joking around to cheer him up a bit. But despite how much Jack or Mark was trying, it didn't work. He felt to her heartbreaking. They tried to play some video games, but but Tony wasn't much up for it though. But eventually, after about a few hours, Tony decided to go home, and he said he will call them as much soon as soon as possible like when he has any update. But when he came home, he noticed there was a different car in the driveway. What? What is cousin Anna doing here? Anna was actually Tony's older cousins. She was actually three years older than Tony, and they were close. She was like a big sister to him. She lived in a neighbor town over. Hey, cousin Tony, how are you? Anna, what are you doing here? Tony asked. Um, your parents called me and told me what happened. So, I drop everything and decide to come over to spend some time with you. I mean, you're my favorite cousin still. Isn't that right, little brother? They used to joking around when they were younger, calling each other for big sister or little, little, little brother. I, I appreciate it, Anna, but I would prefer to be alone. I understand. But if you want to talk or have anything to do, I will be here. Thank you. I appreciate it. But just before that, he was about to go to his room. Honey? Yeah, Mom? Any update about her condition? Oh, she's stable but in a critical condition. She is ICU. Oh. But she's just the wrong person. She will make it. Even though that he wanted to say that he wished the same thing too, but he tried to be optimistic, optimistic as much as possible. 
Yeah, I know, Mom. She is. Then he went to his room and laid down. Even that whole night, Tony tried to fall and get some sleep. But what did he possible? Could anyone blame him, though? Knowing that his own girlfriend was in the hospital in this necessary condition, there was a big risk that she may lose her life. But eventually, though, around maybe 4 a.m., he managed to get some sleep, though. But he didn't wake up around maybe at, at noon. Ah, uh, morning, sleepyhead, said Anna. Oh, uh, you're still here? Of course. I just have to stay here for a couple of days, said Anna, with a smile at the kitchen table. Ah, uh, you're a little bit later than usual. Well, I mean, there's been the holiday break, and I usually don't sleep, and I usually don't go out as early. But, any updates? No, your parents haven't even gotten calls from your, from Nikki's parents yet, though. As but as Nikki as Tony was about to sit down, suddenly his phone turned to started ringing, and he noticed the phone number was actually Nikki's mom's number. Hello. Yes, says me. Willie. Oh, that's good news. How is she? Thank goodness for that. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting me know. Bye. And then he hang up. Who was it? Nikki's parents. Nick, that's. Tony saw that both Anna and his parents was looking at him with a curious, was cautious look, and it was Nikki's mom. How is she? No, no, no. She make it. She had just had to left ICU and different room right now. She is. Is more stable now than this is as before. Had she woken up? No. The doctor ex does not expect her to maybe wake up in a couple in for the next couple of days. I, I'm so sorry, still Sarah. I'm still so sorry to hear all this, though. Said Anna. Thanks. I'm I'm going over there after after I have something to eat. That sounds like a good idea. If you want, I can drive you there. Thanks, but. I'll take my own car, said Tony, but I appreciate it. After his quick lunch, he got dressed and left for the hospital, and he was directly told where the room she was placed in, even though Nikki's parents had already been there. He sat down next to her and just, even though she was in his machines, and that he couldn't still believe that she was unconscious still, but at least she was safe and was on a better way to get recovered. The doctor they had explained to both Tom, to Tony and Nikki's parents that he didn't even expecting that she not, may not even expect to be waking up for the next couple of days, maybe a week. It, they were not sure how long she would be unconscious. Considering at this how severe accent he were had. And it was something that both Tony and Nikki's parents could explain and also accept. So for the next couple of days, Tony spent every single day by Nikki's side, telling her what's been happening in his life and just try to be as joyful as much as possible. But just the only seeing her in the hospital, the hospital bed made him really hurtful. But he was still not more optimistic than this before, knowing that she still make it through. But on one day when he was sitting by his side, he felt more positive than as before. Nikki, you know, all this time we had spent together on our first date and all our other dates we had, I had never felt more happy to be with someone like you. You really complete my life, you know, even before all this. I wasn't even expected to find my true love, but now this, it, it really hurt me my, so much. I was afraid of losing you. I love you more than anything. Even though I know, even though you may not even hear me on any of this, but if it, if somehow you did hear me, 
I just want to tell you. I really love you more than anything in the whole world. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me. I would do anything to save your life. Anything. I just, I don't. I'm so sorry to hear this. What happened to you? I was at literally at your home. But then those officers came by to help them inform your mom what happened. I was equally shocked. I tried to not to cry, but it was too hard to you know, resist it. I really wish that you couldn't have been in accident. But, anyways, I'm still happy that you made it through this. Please, Nikki, wake up soon. I really want to see your eyes again. Your smile, your beautiful smile. I wish you that I could see you soon again. I love you. And then he gave her a kiss on the cheek, and as he was about to turn to leave the room, I love you too, said Nikki weakly. Tony stood, stood still. His eyes got big and quickly turned around. And stare at Nikki. She was awake. She was smiling, and even though she was just tired, you, you're awake. Mm hmm. I heard what you said, Tony. And I love you too more, more than anything. Those words hit him so deeply, and he started crying. He immediately started calling for a doctor that he did, and that she is awake. A doctor came rushing in towards the room and looked at some tests, and sure enough, she was awake. I should call your parents, said Tony. He pulled off his phone and dialed Tony's Nikki's mom on the right of phone. Yes? Oh, hey, Tony. And he was actually on the FaceTime. So, anything new? Actually, yeah, you could say that. How about, but you don't tell her. Why don't, why don't you tell her, Nikki? And her mom's face got big eyes and started crying. E is she? And then he turned the phone around and showed her. Hi, mom. Nikki? She screamed on the phone. And even her dad was in the room was like, What's happening? What's happening? And he saw. On the phone. Oh my god. Nikki. You're awake. And dad didn't hesitate. Both, both of them just left the house. Took off the hospital. And shortly they were all there. They couldn't believe it. She had waken up. They were not expecting it. And they asked the doctor. How soon can she leave the hospital? The doctor said that she may, if as, as, as soon as possible, as much as in getting showing improvement of her recovering, she will be able to leave the hospital within the next couple of days, or maybe as well. But she still would have to make some fall under recovery, but still have to not leave her home for the next couple of days just to relax her most. And a couple of days later, when she was taken home, Nikki was had to stay either in her bed or on the couch to relax for more some time. After all, this severe accident nearly cost her life, and of course, her parents were not would even hesitate to do anything to make sure that she is safe. And after that, the same day when she was allowed came home, the same day when she wakes up from the from the being unconscious for nearly several days, Tony went home. Told her parents, his parents, and his cousin Anna was happy. They were all happy that she was awake and that she may have to leave the hospital soon. She immediately called up Jack. Hey Jack. Uh, hey dude. Anything news? You can say that much. Oh, wait. Don't tell me. She's awake. Uh huh. She is. <laughs> That's good news, man. I'm happy to hear you that. Said Jack with a smile. Well, I'm just glad that she is awake, dude. I could not have even believe that this all this news happened. Trust me, dude. I told you she's a strong girl. And I was right, 
Wasn't I? Yeah, you were. And Mark, too. If you see him, tell him about that. I will. Trust me. I will. And a couple of days later, Nikki was allowed to go home. And like the doctor said, she was not allowed to do any physical training or, or anything heavy lifting like that. After all, she needs still some more rest. And Tony, he actually came by to her, to her home almost every single day. He even gave her the necklace, and she loved it. This is why that though they didn't be able to celebrate the Christmas together. Since ever since she ended up in hospital, Tony and his parents decided to stay at home until and they informed the rest of their relatives, which they all agreed and understood why they why they didn't show up for Christmas. But they promised each other that they will do to make up time. And as when school started again, though, things looked forward up for both. After all, even though the school was started only a few weeks later, everyone at the school had already heard what happened. Edward was like, ask her what happened, if she okay, if she's still in pain or anything. But Nick is explaining that she's not in pain anymore, and that she's fine, that she's, she's glad to have someone like Tony in her life that has been there for all the time. She just was just happy to have someone like Tony. Especially when he was there to help her defend her after being accused of being cheating on that big man test months earlier. Having, having him to be there for helping her improving her innocence. She was really happy to have someone like Tony in her life. It was for him. She had no idea how things would have turned out otherwise. And not only that, but having heaven to have Tony by her side after her severe accident, even if it meant that she could have lost her life. But she was happy that he was staying by her side every single day afterwards. It was for him. She had no idea what would happen. But even though Tony himself was really happy and excited that she made it through, even though that she really had to take it slowly just sometime after this accident, but she was just both happy, both she and Tony was happy that she made a full recovery after this accident. The love and the bond between Tony and Nikki was so incredibly strong. The true passion of love between Tony and Nikki, it was beyond any doubts that Tony and Nikki were meant to be with each other. Even though for Nikki herself, she couldn't have, couldn't have asked for a much better boyfriend than Tony. And eventually, she realized he was to meant to be with her. Even after they had finished high school, they both went to the same local community college. Tony wanted to study to be a mechanic, and so he did. And Nikki, she wanted to be uh, to work in with the more finance so she could be better at it. Around at the time, just two years after they finished high school, they even found a small apartment as which they moved into. They were actually happy to take it the next step in the relationship by moving in together, and it was something both actually agreed on. Even after that, after that they had even completed their community college teaching studies, Tony actually became a full trained mechanic and even found a well paid job in a car, a car shop in town, and Nikki though, she actually found a small grocery store not far from the apartment and she actually went light the job. And even after about a few months after her good dedication, determination to have to work at this place, the owner actually saw that she had the potential to be the next manager assistant. And she was really lighting up that she may have the potential to be the next assistant manager, which she didn't expect it to happen. 
But when she told Tony about this, he was actually surprised, but at least he was happy for this to happen. He was really excited for all about this. He had even had that well, even though his job was also well paid, it was just something that he really much enjoyed. He had no problem to interact with customers and the other staff at the car shop, and it was just something he really enjoyed. But eventually, though, after they've been dating for about six years, Tony decided maybe that he wanted to take the next level. In fact, he had already bought a, a ring in secret. And to celebrate the sixth anniversary, he took her to a restaurant in town to celebrate it. But even though Nick herself had no idea what he was planning to do. But in a way, though, she would like it no matter what happened. But he was also wondering though if she was even if he was ready to take the next step, or maybe that she had to wait a little bit more longer. But when he told that to Mark and Jack, they was they both said like Wow Tony, are you really ready to take the next step? asked both Mark and Jack at the same time. Yes. I'm certain that I am really much ready to ask Nikki to marry me. Since we have been together for a number of years at this point, I am pretty much very ready to ask her to marry me. So where are you planning to do this? Since it is your and Nikki's six years anniversary of being together, I'm planning to do this as a, at a nice restaurant in town I booked a table at. Let me guess. At an uh, Italian restaurant. How do you know? Well, we both know that Italian food is Nikki's favorite food. Well, you're right about that, said Tony with a smirk. Well, she would like that idea, though, said Mark, background. You know how much she likes that food, so I don't think that is a bad choice after all. She, she likes that type of food. Yeah, and once again, though, Mark, Tony, you picked the right place to do it. But are you sure she even is going to be to say yes? Said Tony. Are you kidding me? Mark? Tony, said Mark. You and Nikki have been together for six years. And you don't think she even liked you that much and said wouldn't say yes if you, to your proposal to her? Well, you, you may write for that, Mark. But have you planned to do it exactly, though? Well, I thought maybe doing that after we had our dessert to ask her to marry me at the restaurant. Well, that's a good thing. But do you two believe that she might say yes or no? It was silent in the background for a moment. Even though that Mark, Tony can actually hear Mark and Jack are talking about something, but it was like more than a whisper. But in a few seconds later, Dude, we both know that she will say yes, said Mark and Jack at the same time. After all, you been, had been together with her for so many years, and we had to ask you, does she love you? Yes, that you had to answer. So if why would she then say no if, you really love, if she really loves you so deeply? It would make no sense if she said no if you do propose to her at the restaurant. You to me had a point, said Tony Buck. I'm just nervous. Nervous? You? Well, to be saying that we have never been experienced with this kind of things for ourselves yet, so... But, Tony, we both know that Nikki really loves you so much, and she would even hesitate to say yes when you proposed to her today, or at least a few days now, at the restaurant. Yeah, you made a good point, though, said Tony back. Um, but I'm still just like, nervous if she would say, even say no. Or maybe that she would say that she isn't ready yet. Maybe she wants to wait another a more few, a few more years to even get married. Well, it is a good chance that that could also happen, that she say, would say that maybe that she isn't ready yet. But, but we both are certainly sure that she will say yes, Tony. Don't hesitate to ask her. Ask yourself, are you ready? 
to ask her the question. Yes, I'm 100% sure I'm ready. Well, if you're ready, then do it. You are ready. Tell us. Are you ready? I am ready. What do you say? I am ready. Good. Good, said both Mark and Jack at the same time said. Well, you are ready. And we both hope it will go to be a good answer back on. And let us know when or what, she said back. Even though we both know that it will be a big yes, said Jack with a singing tone. Well, I will. Um, I may have to call both my parents and inform them about this idea. And even inform her parents. Well, good luck. Thanks, said Tony and hang up the phone. Only a moment later, he actually called his parents on a FaceTime. Hey, mom. Oh, hey, hi. How are you? Uh, doing well, you know, here and that. Planning for a little few things that are up for my six years anniversary with Nikki. Six years already. It feels like yesterday when you two start dating. I know, mom. This is crazy, right? So, is that home? Sadly, no. He has um, left the house for a moment ago because he had to go to, to the store to buy some food. Ah, okay. Um, there is one thing I'd like to mention, though, that um, since it's my six years anniversary with Nikki, um, I'm planning to take her to the, uh, this Italian restaurant in town since she likes the food so much. So, I'm planning to propose to her after that. Are you really? Said his mom with a smile, a little bit laughing, a little bit crying tone as well. <laughs> OMG, I'm so proud of you, son. I mean, your dad will be like, Are you doing this right, my son? Or something like that, he would say. She laughed. Yeah, that is something he would probably say. But I'm pretty sure I'm really 100% ready to ask her. Well, we hope for you today it will, be, it, will, it, will, it will go well, my son. Thanks, mom. Um, I should call her parents to inform her, inform them as well. While they be really like supportive and happy, like well, like we are. That was sure. Thanks, thanks, mom. And then he hang up and called Nikki's mom. Hi, hi, Tony. How you been doing? Uh, you know, busy, busy planning for my six years anniversary with Nikki in a few days and. Uh, yeah, wow, six years, that is, um, it's a time though, isn't it? Times really fly so fast by us. It is true, said Tony back, but that is not I the reason I'm calling. Oh, is uh, Nicky's dad home? Actually, he's uh, next to me. Um, we are actually we're just watching some TV and, what is it? Um, there is one thing I would like to tell you both. I already have told my mom about it and even to my best friends about this idea. And uh, I'm actually going to propose to Nikki. And in the background it's like <laughs> Are you going to propose to our daughter? Finally said Nikki started a little laugh in the background. He was like he was drinking something and almost choking on it. Wait, are you really serious though, Tony? Are you really ready to ask her to marry you? Had you even got the, word, the, the ring yet? Yes, I have. And I am 100% sure I'm ready to propose to Nikki. That's good to hear, my son. Well, um, is there anything you want from us? Um, well, the only thing I would like to do is to... If you two can keep this a secret, after all, there's only a few days more to my anniversary with Nikki, and I wouldn't have this spoiled to her. I mean, at least the ruined opportunity and chance if she never already knew they would happen. Don't worry, our lips are sealed, and I know your parents and your friends will not do the same. Yeah, I know that, and um, once again, I would like just wanted to let you all know what I'm trying to do, and um, thanks for the big support, I mean, if it wasn't for all of you, I 
or wasn't sure if I even myself was ready, but thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. Well, I just know when uh, how it went. We will. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Tony. And after. For since the anniversary isn't wasn't supposed to be in the next two days. But during those two days though, Tony was really nervous how things are even gonna play out. He played so many different scenarios in his mind, like how the things were even gonna work and what he what kind of reaction that Nikki will show and and or exactly when he would do it during the dinner or during after when having the dessert or even after the dessert. But he decided to do that after after they had their dessert. Even though when he wasn't sure how to even that, but he had even said or mentioned about this anniversary dinner to Nikki. But the same day when he had told his parents and her parents about his proposal. When she came home from her work, hey Nikki, oh hey Tony, how have you been doing today? Oh, you know, it's my birthday. it was my day off, so I decided to just relax at most at home. You know, watch some TV, take care of the house or the apartment. Yeah, true. Uh, Nikki, there is one thing I'd like to ask you or tell you something. Oh, what is it? Uh, you know, our six years anniversary is uh, within the next two days, right? Yeah. Um, I actually had a surprise for you, though. Oh, what is it? Um, I have booked a, a table at your favorite Italian restaurant in town. Oh, did you now? Well, I... <laughs> I appreciate it, though, Tony. And I know we both had a good time there. I mean, think of it. Six years? I mean, I didn't even expect this, but we've been together so long, but it just feels like Time flies fast by, is it? You know it, said Tony with a smile. And even though Tony himself was not ready to ask her, but he wanted to wait. And two days later, at the restaurant, he was actually sitting there at the table and seeing her in her beautiful blue dress. And it's like, it was an incredible feeling. But at the same time, he was so quite nervous. Having the ring box in his pocket, not knowing exactly how things will play out, after remember those scenarios that he thought of could happen. But he will have to ask her, because he had already promised her parents, his parents, and his two best friends of all. But he was ready to ask her. And after the death they had their dessert, Tony wanted to say decide to wait maybe for another moment before asking. When they both were having had their dessert, and Tony felt now he was ready. So he stood up, walked over to Nikki, and went on knees, and showed her the ring. And he said, Nikki. Nikki. Ever since we have been together for such a long time, I know you ordered my true soulmate after all this time. I know this may not be been as a big surprise to you, but I know you are my soulmate, and I love you for the very first time I saw you at the school, even though I didn't know it myself at the point, at the moment. So I really want to ask you, Nikki, will you marry me? It was silent for a moment, and it was so silent in the restaurant that like you can hear a pin drop. But as he looking at Nikki, she started crying. He was expecting maybe a no, but she started to smile and said, Yes, yes, I want to marry you, Tony. And she hugged him and kissed him. And suddenly, all the other guests and the staff itself started cheering and applauding for this big moment. Tony felt like a big relief on his heart and his shoulders. Now he actually had asked her the big question. And that she had said yes. Even though deep down he only knew that she would say yes. And he could have been more happier inside. They stayed at the restaurant for a bit longer, for maybe a moment, a moment longer before returning home. But instead, they went to her to Nikki's parents' home 
to reveal this big news, even though that her parents already knew about it. But when they came there, they saw that they had visitors over. Mom? Dad? What are you two doing here? said Tony and saw that his own parents was over at the at Nikki's parents' home. Well her parents invited us over and um, we were waiting for you two. So did you two all did you already knew about this? Yeah, you're Fiance Tony, your boyfriend Tony actually called us and told his plans this proposal, said Nikki's mom. Oh, did you? She looked around at Tony, who tried to look embarrassed. Ah, that's okay. I don't mind. So, what did you, his, what did you say, said as Tony's mom. And she showed the ring and it's like, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, she really did it! She really said yes! Said both her her both moms and in, in a laughing, crying tone, something like And Tony then noticed her, noticed that Nikki's dad just walking up her to him. Tony, he said with a bit strong voice, mm. uh, yes. And then he was expecting something to happen, but then Tony's, Nikki's dad held out his hand and said, Welcome to the family, man. Welcome to the family, my son. Uh, thank you. And I shook him. Well, maybe you two won't have to something to, to eat. I know you two recently have just got something to eat, but we want to have something to celebrate. This is not much, said Tony's dad, though. I think we can have something more to eat, said Nikki with a smile. Yeah, same here, said Tony, and they all went to the kitchen. And they actually had a good time the rest of the evening. And even the next day, Tony actually called his friends, like, informed them that she did say yes. But that was not much they even though they expected one another not answer. But even though the same evening when he and Nikki had revealed this engagement, what had happened to their parents. They started planning for this wedding since they decided to have the wedding in the in the upcoming summer by the next year. And since it's only a few months away, they were planning to have this wedding at the church in the little town and just having a good time. They were only planning for like have a DJ and some like a small party afterwards with some music or type of food or like that. Even there was a lot of planning for this big day, but both Nikki and Tony have both said the comment that like, they don't have to rush into the getting all that kind of things planned though. But Nikki's mom and Tony's mom had arranged that to help Nikki to find a wedding dress when it was when it's time comes and then close up close enough to the wedding. The same thing happened with Tony's dad who had a promise to help him to find a good suit for the wedding. And even though, even was still a few months away for the next year, summer, and even that they decide to wait a little bit longer with some of the details about the wedding, like the invitations and like that. And even though that Tony said that they shouldn't go around and find the, the, the dress and the suit right away because, because he said, you know, if we find the dress for me, for her, and the suit for me at right now, and and on the day on, on the wedding, what if those if they didn't fit us anymore? Oh, are you calling me fat now? Said Nikki with a smile. No, honey, I'm not calling you fat. I'm just saying I know what you mean. <laughs> Don't worry, I understand though. Isn't it right, mom? Yeah, that's right. But your mom. And me and Nikki will find the best dress as possible for the wedding. So don't worry about it. And we will be able to help you around with this on the finance to the DJ, the party, and this on the food afterwards. I mean, don't worry about it. We will help you that. But I'm going to ask, how many people would you have even considered inviting for the wedding? Um, some close friends, close family members. We, uh, I mean, we don't expect that to be such a big wedding, though, did we? No, I don't want to have such 
big, pumpy wedding and just have a small laugh for us, all of us to be in there, to be in, having a good time. That's all I'm saying. So understandable. So with the next couple of weeks and a couple of months and, and onwards, all the proper preparations for the wedding would fall full speed. They had already booked a, a DJ for the wedding party. And they had even arranged type of food, and even Nikki and Tok and Tony had even went to taste some a bakery town to try the, the this decide what type of flavor they want for this cake, and how it looks like, and even arranged that. And they had even made a list of people that they want to invite for this wedding, like how many close friends, how many close family members, and even though they had even and even had set the date to be. July 10 of that next year, but even though it was only like one month away from the wedding itself, Nikki and Tony were still talking about for their, their upcoming wedding, and even though they're only like one month away from it, both of you said, I can't believe it. It's like, it feels like only, like only yesterday when I proposed to you, and it's like already a month away from our wedding. Can you believe it? It's almost out here, around the corner. Yeah, is it that crazy? I mean, think about it. It was like yesterday when we two start dating and now we are engaged and preparing our own wedding. I never imagined that will happen so, so soon now. Well, you've been using those, Nikki. I wasn't really planning for her to get married so soon. I mean, I was expecting maybe it to be in dating for maybe eight years or so, but six, well. But you know, I really felt ready to do ask a big question to you after doing this, at that, that point. I mean, having you in my life so much, it has spread so much joy, so much happiness, well, so much light in it. Yeah, I know I understand what you mean. Before you, you know, even met you as, before even us dating, my life felt so empty, so dark. I mean, I felt so depressed all the time when when Kelly and her two friends bullied me all the time. And I was expecting, but in those words that they said to me that I would never find a boyfriend and no guy would even like me, they even want to date me because I was too ugly and something like that. Those words eventually start hurting me. And, and, and it was like you, Believe those words, then that no one actually will even want to be even to be with you. Exactly. Don't worry, Nikki. Those words doesn't even mean anymore. After all, if this those words had meant it, it would happen, well, I'm saying this: me and you wouldn't have even been here, now. and this wedding wouldn't even have happened, and you and me hadn't even been together if you had listened to those words. Yeah, that's true. Um, there is one thing I would like to ask you though about the wedding, said Nikki. Oh, um, for the wedding though, have you planned who is going to be your best man? Actually, when you mentioned it, I hadn't even really decided yet though. I mean, I really don't know if I should pick Mark as my best man or Jack as my best friend. After all, he's my oldest best friend. And what about you? Have you already even picked who's going to be your maid of honor for the wedding? Actually, yes, um, I have, for at least about two months by this point. I am actually chose for two months ago. You did? And you hadn't even told me who it is? Um, no, I didn't know how you would even react if I told you who is going to be my maid of honor. Who is it? It is someone I know. You can say that much, said Nikki nervously. You can tell me. I promise not be mad or anything. It is... Kelly. Kelly. That Kelly from high school? Are you kidding me? Why her? I mean, don't take me wrong with this, Nikki. What she did back in high school? I didn't expect her to even talk to you. Um... In fact, she did reach out to me about about a year ago. A year ago? On Facebook? Mm-hmm. Well, 
we were just small talking back and forth about this, about me and her being, or at least you and me. And she was happy for us to hear that we are dating still. And she was apologizing for what she did in the past, about like, like a big test being she accused me from that and the dance. Yeah, I can understand that, but I cannot even believe that she actually is honest about it. I mean, back then, she was really mean to almost anyone, including you. She is the last person I know expecting you to invite her to a wedding. But why? I mean, doesn't even she have the same personality as now or back then? No. I mean, I was cautious and careful not expecting her to be saying like, uh, Oh, you stole my man from me. I, You don't deserve him. But she was completely different. It's like she had redeemed herself for that then. I mean, we had not even seen or spoke to her since high school ended for us, haven't you? Now you just mentioned it, no, I, had, I, I hadn't even seen or talked to her else at all at that after. I thought she had moved away from town or something, but... But she still lives here? Yeah, she does. She does. Um, so, you and her have been meeting at the top of time? From time to time, though, yeah, we have over a cup of coffee or something like that. So we just get to know each other better, and and eventually, after about two months ago, when we were just talking, and I mentioned about this wedding, and she only knew about it, and and I can't even back then even decide who's going to be my maid of honor. So I asked her just randomly if she was interested to be that, and she said yes immediately. So I am curious, yeah. So, what has she been doing for the past few years, though, since high school? Um, she works at this uh, Blue Rose uh, hair salon in uh, the hair, hair stylist saloon in the, at the mall. You know about it? Yeah, I actually heard about it. So, she works there? Yeah, she is a manager, in fact. Wow, manager and work as a high hair stylist? I didn't see that coming. Yeah. And she even has a boyfriend of her own for a couple of years now. Wow, I'm impressed. So she has moved on and makes a good thing for her. That's impressive though, but but I understand you were careful that she was pretending to be trying to steal me from you again though, but she didn't? No. In fact, I even had dinner or lunch with her and her boyfriend a couple of times and I can I could see there were actually genuine feelings between them, and I understand if you probably don't want her to be my maid of honor at the wedding, being careful enough. No, 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 no. I mean, if you trust her, I trust you. But, but I do believe that you are honest that she had moved on and redeemed herself and found someone else to be there. Yeah, that's true. So you're not. So you're not mad? No, I'm not mad. So about your best man though, have you decided who's gonna be it? Uh, that's a dead tough decision. That's for certain. Let's say it, said Tony back. I mean, Mark is a good friend of mine. Jack is my best friend and oldest friend. I don't know what what to do if I could to pick one of them. I mean, I don't want to make any of them to be mad at me or just feel left out, said Tony back. But how about this idea? Why don't you just pick both as the best man at the wedding? Both? Yeah, I mean, I have several bridesmaids, so why don't have two best men at the wedding? You know, that does sound as a good idea, said Mark, said Tony. I will actually call both Call Jack and Mark to tell them about this idea, and hopefully they are okay and accept that idea. But if don't, well, I may have to pick just pick one of them eventually. After all, there's one month away to decide to pick one of them. True, but I'm not sure that they will pick they will both your best man. After all, close friends. True. So Tony left the room, went out to call Jack. Hey, Jack. Oh, hey, Tony. How are you? Uh, do you know, doing well, applying for the wedding, and, um, uh, the question came up were between me and Nikki that who's gonna be the best man. 
for the wedding. Ah, I know you will do it. I know you will probably take pick me or Mark, but um, yeah, about that. I know that maybe one of one of you would be a little friend left out if I pick like one of you for the wedding as a best man. So Nikki came up with a good compromise for that. Oh, would that be? No one of us. <laughs> Jack said, "Listen, I call." Actually, she thought maybe that I would pick both of you as my best man. Wow. Okay. First, I didn't see that coming," said Jack. Uh, surprised look tone. But I'm sure that Mark wouldn't mind if you ask him about it. I mean, you can always ask him. But I'm okay with that, though. Thanks. Um. I will text him and see what he says. Thanks. And yeah, see you at your wedding in a month, though. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you then, dude. Well, thanks. And bye. And then he texted Mark and asked the same question. And Mark was actually up for it as well. He did find to be a second best man. And even though that both Mark and Tony Jack had said yes to be the best man, he decided to inform his family about this new potential idea to have two best men. And his parents was like, oh, this is unusual. But as long as you're happy and uh, and you, you couldn't even decide from which one to be your best man, so we can understand that. So they both actually accepted idea to be also the best best man. And of course, as time went on, the, this marriage was getting, the wedding was getting closer and closer by day by day. And even though it's getting closer by day by day, Tony started to get more nervous, more and more, more nervous every single day. But his friends, his family ensured him that it doesn't have to be necessary to be to be nervous. Even though his own dad said to Tony, he said, you know so. Even I was really nervous when I was getting married to your mom. Wait, really, Dad? <laughs> you know, son, every single males are probably are so nervous they getting married to on their first big day with their beautiful wife, the the bride to come. So I'm not so certain that many others have not been freaking out. So whatever you do, always when you see that, take a deep breath at a wedding at the altar. It will be fine. Or you. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. And, of course, a month later at the wedding day, Mark, Jack, and Tony were standing by the altar waiting for everything to start. So Mark looked, looked at Tony. Are you nervous, dude? Uh, kinda. Don't worry, don't worry, dude. It will be fine, said Jack. After all, you have your two best friends here. True, and you are getting married with your best, your your dream girl, aren't you? Yeah, that you have it. And are you really ready to want to spend the rest of your life with her? Of course. I wouldn't even have been here if I wanted to do that. You know, we are actually happy that this happened, though, because if you didn't, well, who knows? And even though that. Kelly was invited as well? I mean, I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah, me here. Same here, they said Tony back. I mean, I was not expecting that she was invited to be as part of the wedding, or maybe as, as a guest, or the maid of honor. But I did have meet up with Kelly, with Nikki, a couple of times before the wedding. And even with her boyfriend, and she was really genuine, genuine about it. She didn't have any feelings for me, and in fact, I'm proud that she had found someone to be with. But then the music started. Oh, get ready. It started. Phew, said Mark, Tony back. Still nervous? Uh, uh-huh. Take a deep breath. Take two big breaths, in fact. It will happen. It will be well. So he did take tea, two deep breaths. And sure enough, after that, the doors opened. And the bride was walking in with her dad in the arms. And when he saw her the first time in a dress walking up the aisle towards him, he felt like he was the lucky guy in the 
whole world. And even though Mark and Jack just lean forward and said, Man, you are really lucky to have such an amazing woman like her. I mean, don't blame us, but she's really gorgeous. Yeah, she is, and she is an angel, that's for sure. And then suddenly, the guest, look, now, Nikki was standing next to him at the altar, and the priest began, Dear beloved guests and other family members, we are here together to bring this union, this, this union between Tony and Nikki. And as best both had decided to make their own vows. Well, let me start with the bride. Nikki turned around and looked at, at Tony. And she started saying her vows on a note that she had. Tony, you've had expressed more love to me than no one else has given me. And I cannot have been more happy to have someone like you in my life. You have spread so much happiness, so much joy in my life. And, and with that, I cannot have even been more happier to be with someone like you who has always been there for me. Giving so much joy, much so laughter, and and even not only that, but being there when I was in the in, in the hospital after that big after that car accident. I couldn't even know what else to do, if I even didn't make it. But standing here you with you today is a sign that we are meant to be. Since you had expressed so much love to me, more than anyone else has ever done. And for that, I'm truly happy to be even calling you as your my husband. I love you, Tony more than anything. And then she stopped. Tony stood there silently, smiling, almost crying to hear those words really hit his heart much. It touched his heart really deeply. And he then picked up his own note. And Tony started to read his vows. My love for you is endless. And it started with a small crush which eventually did something more. I didn't know if I could love you so much at this point. We laugh, we cry, we argue, but we always make a peace with each other. And especially the time when I was almost lost you after the car accident. I don't know what my life would have been if I lost you after that point. But you are truly the one that most means so much to me. I value your life, I value the smile, the laughter, kindness and I repeat the same value towards you as, you as you do to me. To me you're the most valuable ever things that has ever been. You are more worth than anything in the whole world's treasures. Your eyes are the most amazing that shine, shines in the moonlight and smile that brings me warm joy. I cannot have it been more happier to be with someone like you, Nikki. You are truly the most amazing person I had ever seen, and I cannot have been more happier to be with someone like you. I really, really am happy to be able to call you as my wife, and for that, I'm truly, truly happy. Thank you. Eventually, the priest continued to his ceremony, and when he said, when they both said, I do, I do, I pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride. And he did. And all of a sudden, all the guests started cheering, applauding for this big moment. Everyone had this amazing time after. They went to this small party where it had been arranged for everyone. They had a good time dancing to good music, had a good food, everything just even though when even when Tony and Nikki shared the first dance together, looking deep in each other's eyes, and it felt like the whole world had just stopped. 
and they were only ones there. And even afterwards, Nikki enjoyed spending time with some of her friends and even some family members on a chance she invited. But suddenly, when Tony was alone, she felt a, he felt a tap on his shoulder, and he turned around, and it was Kelly. Hey, Tony, uh, can't talk to you? Of course. And congratulations. Thanks. So I'm wondering if, if it's possible you and me could share a dance? Well, suddenly, we can do that. I know from against that they didn't give you a dance. So they start dancing. But while they're dancing, they were just small talk and same time. You know, I'm so sorry about how I did the past. You know, that's ha what's been happening past in the past. Let's not focus on that anymore. Yeah, I know, but still, I just want to apologize what I did. I, I can't justify what my, what my past behavior were like. I was just so jealous that you were having this amazing goal with your life. I wanted the same thing too. But eventually, I moved on, and I found this amazing guy, and he really treats me well, like you do, do to, to Nikki. And I just want to say thank you to show me the right path, how to redeem myself, and move on, and eventually find my true life. You're welcome, Nikki, like Kelly, said Tony. And gave her a hug and afterwards. Everyone else had a just amazing time. They weren't until like in the afternoon when Kelly stood with her with her boyfriend when it was time for Tony and Nikki to leave for their honeymoon. It turns out that Nikki's parents actually had arranged a secret vacation to plans for them. They had arranged for them to celebrate the honeymoon on Hawaii for a whole week. Both Tony and Nikki didn't expect that, but they were happy to have it to be on Hawaii. They said goodbye to the family, friends, and went on their honeymoon. On Hawaii, though, they had this amazing time, swimming in the ocean, going sightseeing on the islands, and just having an amazing time. And when they went back to home, though, they still lived in a small apartment. But eventually, but eventually, after about two years, they bought a smaller house in the, in the suburbs, used to be having a good time. But eventually, after about almost a year, they'd be leaving the house. Both Nick, Nikki and Tony announced something big. They were expecting a daughter in the next few months. Both families were really overjoyed to have hearing this, and they eventually named the daughter Kim. And only about four years later, they even announced they were expecting a boy, which they named Luke. They weren't even expecting to even to have this though, because they were both happy to have a daughter and a son. But even after all this. Their love for each other was so strong, it was incredible, unbreakable bond they had. But when Luke was three years old, they were expecting another baby. But when the doctor told them it wasn't just one, but two, they were expecting twins. Tony was like, T -t "Twins? Oh!" And he fell and he fainted on the ground on the floor. Oh dear, not again. Is it okay? Nikki asked. And the nurse said, Yeah, it is quite common that the usually husband or boyfriend or fiance usually faints after hearing of this. Oh, your his fiance or wife is having twins or triplets. But um Yeah, but it's okay though. He's he will be fine. Let them rest for a moment and he will wake up. And after this big news shocked them to having twin daughters expecting. When they went to see the parents, or first her parents and his parents, they were really shocked and like, twins? 
they never even expected, because both Tony and his parents, if there has ever been twins in, in both their side of family, but both shook their heads and said, no, not in our family. But it turns out from that Nikki's side of family, her, her grandma had actually twin daughters, her mom and her twin sister, which is her aunt. And she had totally forgot that her mom had a twin sister. Since then, both were really excited to expect it. But even though that Nikki herself said, well, having twins, this will be a, a big challenge for us. Tony said, yes, that's for sure, and having a lot of sleep that's the night. But Tony's, Tony's father-in-law, Nikki's dad, said, don't worry, Tony, you will make it. I mean, your parents had all had you then, so they can pull you. And so far, you had experienced two children so far, a daughter and a son. So you had some experience with this. Well, that's true, sir, but having twins, it, it will be more as a big challenge for us, for us but, but I know we will make it happen. And Nikki smiled and said, yeah, well, it will happen for us. We will make it go through. But eventually, a few months later, they had their twin daughters, which they named Lisa and Kelly. They named the other daughter after their friend Kelly in honor. And not only that, they had even had made, they even had asked Mark, Jack, to be the godfather of all their children, which they all agreed. And both Mark and Jack said, well, now we have our own God daughters and godsons will it will be busy for us, but we we accepted this uh, this idea. And even Kelly, which has been asked to be the godmother to her daughter to the, all of them, she also accepted. And it has only brought Kelly and Tony back more closer as once before again. After many years ago, when they were still in middle school, they were just close friends. But that changed when they started both in when they both went to the same high school. Her personality and everything changed. But she became a bully since she started bullying Nikki and many other people. But now, she was just glad that she had one of her old friends back in her life again. And at that, she also had an amazing man in her life. Even after all this, the love between Tony and Nikki was so unbreakable bond. They couldn't have been had asked for anything better in their lives. And for Nikki, though, she was just glad that she had someone like Tony in her life. Especially when they were in high school, when, when he stood up for her, defended and proving her innocent when that she was accused from being framed to be cheating on the big math test, what she was innocent to. And especially when he was there by her side in the hospital every single day when she had after that car accident. She could have been more happy to have someone like Tony in her life. He really means so much to her. Not only that, she really cares about him so much. He is so happy. She's so happy to have this amazing guy in her life who is showing so much kindness, genuine laughter, joy. Even before she even met Tony in that, in that manner, she felt so depressed and lonely, even though she had only a few friends in the high school. But after that, Tony and Nikki started dating at, at high school. Her life started to change. She felt more happier, more excited, was more joy, so much light in her life. And even for Tony himself, before he even had the, even the, the, the basic idea, or even the thought of dating, someone like Nikki, he felt like something was missing in his life. But even though he doesn't even realize it, every time when he saw her, he actually had some feelings for Nikki, even before he even realized it until much later on. And he told her that. She smiled and said, I must have the same thing, because even though I did like you, even back then, I didn't realize that 
I really like you, like you, like you. I like you, that I had feelings for you. I mean, think about it. If you had even had defended me against Nikki, against Kelly back then, or de defended my innocent, and who knows if you had been, if I had been, if Kelly had continued to bully me so much more, and I may have to been transferred to a different school. And if that happened, I would have missed out to, to meet my future soulmate, which would be you, said Nikki with a smile. Yeah, I cannot even imagine how the life would be if I didn't meet you at all at the time, or if we, if we as, if you and me never end up dating. But having you in my life is, it meant that we were, we were meant to be each other. You may give me a, you gave me a meaning in life, and you gave me the same thing. You gave me joy, happiness, and, and light. In before then, I felt so depressed, I didn't know what to do, or... And those words that Kelly told me, that I, no guys would even want to date me, I'm too ugly. They... They hurt me so deep, and I almost like believed in those words. But after you really stood up from my instant, instant day, that I was innocent after that being, for, being accused for the cheating, it... It really clearly stand out to me back then that someone really deeply cared about me, and it almost gave me gave it hope to find someone to be with someone, or maybe have a maybe make a new friend. But having you been there for me, standing up and proving my to be innocent, it clearly showed that someone really did really cared about me, cared about me so much, and that I couldn't give up my hope and. Finding someone like you, and I was hopefully maybe that, maybe that you and I could be. <laughs> yeah, and that reminds me at least one time when that we were in this uh, winter festival or the theme that Principal James arranged the school for us, all of us, that he was like, well, typical Principal James behavior that he they suggest that I should ask you out on a date and see how it can work, but what we both know what happened. Well, I did mention it to you, and you were like, oh, really? And then uh, you did ask me out on a date, and uh, it went from one day to another, and eventually get to engagement, now we even got married, and have a family together. I don't know what else to be saying. This is an amazing lifestyle. I mean, I really love this, um, my amazing family with my two beloved wife, Nikki. And it's that by a smile to her. Oh, you're really smooth talking to you. <laughs> uh, it takes practice. Yeah, clearly. But you're right. I do love you more than anything, though, Tony. Anything else is just clearly means so much to me. Yes. And I... And I couldn't have been more happier to be with one, someone like you. And for that, Tony was really happy to have been with someone like with Nikki, showing so much kindness, so much compassion. And... And even though for kid, even for Nikki, having so much kindness and so much joy from someone like Tony, given to him, given to her freely, and so much love. And it's beyond anyone that they had even imagined. But she was happy that he, that she asked him out, and that which eventually will lead, lead to lasting to a long lasting relationship, to lead eventually to engagement, to get married, and even start a family. This is one thing that she never has ever expected to happen. But she had dreams that she and Tony would eventually get married eventually at some point. She often daydreamed that she and Tony were getting married at a big sheriff wedding and having two or three kids together and just having those daydreams eventually came true. She couldn't even have asked for anything much better 
not life with someone that she would have cared about. And Tony, though, he really cared so much about Nikki, so more than anything in the whole wild world. Having her in her life, in his life, meant so much to him. Because her kindness showed so much to him. And not only that, because he shared his kindness back to her freely. And he was willing to give her a chance to see if this, this new relationship between them can actually work. And ever since though that she never ever had a boyfriend before, and that she that, that he never even had a girlfriend before either. So being a, in a dating life together was something new, an experience. But since the both their families, so their both parents gave them some ideas and advice what to do on the dates, which they both appreciated. It was eventually leading to them be a long lasting couple. And not only that, to even eventually get married and have started a family together. To have three daughters and one son. They could not even have asked for anything much better than their lifestyle. Tony, he loves Nikki so much. And even especially all those years ago when she was in his car accident. He was deeply feared that he had lost her. Because when he stood there in, in that hallway, in front of the police officers that came to inform Nikki's mom about this accident. Seeing how much her mother was so fragile in that moment, she couldn't even stand on, on her legs. She felt so weak, lost, depressed, at all the same time. But Nikki, she was the one who was really meant so much to him and her family. But Tony, though, Tony, seeing her, Nikki's mom in that state, he felt the very same thing. But he tried to be confident enough to knowing that she is at least safe in the hospital and she is getting help. Even though that he knew that when, she, when Nikki's mom tried to call her dad about what happened, that she couldn't even could perform a single sentence before, like, Nikki, Nikki. She couldn't only repeat Nikki, Nikki, over and over. And though, even that her dad was not sure what was going on until when, when Tony explained, at least what, what the police officers told him and Nikki's mom what happened. And, and especially when he saw Nikki for the first time in the hospital, in the ICU department, he was devastated. He knew there was a big chance, there were a chance that he could lose her forever. And that he could not believe it that even so possible. But he was willing to give anything to save her life. And he will was willing to give sacrifice all his spare time he had to be by her side at the hospital until she wakes up. Even though from that, her parents was really happy to have someone like Tony there to help them so supporting and also be there for their daughter and by her side every single day. Because since then her parents was working all day most part and they were unable to, unable to do so. And since Nikki was still unconscious that time, and Tony was willing to sacrifice even school days to be with Nikki. And the school actually did accept it. But he did actually went to school, but even though he wished he could stay there all days with her. He went to the hospital after he had finished the school day and went to just talk to her, telling her what he had been doing the school day and what everyone has been a lot of the students are wishing and hope that she wakes up soon, that she recovers, and showing so much love and support. But the most of the love support came from him, because he deeply loved her so much more than anything in the whole world. If he had lost Nikki that time, that day, he has no idea, and he could even not even imagine what, what his life would have been. But one thing for sure that he may not have done. If he had lost Nikki in that accident, he wouldn't have tried to find someone else to be with. 
he would have decided to remain alone the rest of his life and more likely to be depressed all his life right out. But that never came to happen, which is he both he and Nikki was happy that that never happened. Because when he saw her smiling when she wake up, had woken up in the hospital bed, he felt like the whole world should stop and his heart had stopped for a few seconds. But he was just happy that Nikki had woken up. And even for much all this, he truly loved Nikki more than anything in the whole world. And for that, he felt grateful that she did hear him and that she made it full, full recovery. Even Nick himself, herself, she was really happy that she made it through from that day also. Because even after that she went, that she left the hospital to go, go home, she still felt tired and still some pain. But Nikki had Tony by her side even then, helping her with some things like even brought her some gifts like some candy, some flowers, and even even brought some new books to, to read with her. And that made her love him even more. He spent so much time with her, even sacrifices most of his own spare time to be with someone like her. Even though that she did tell him that go and you always spend your time with your friends also, you're not spending your time with, with her. But he said, I don't mind spending my time with you. You are the most important person in the whole world for me. And I want to not leave your side ever again. I was so close to losing you there. And I cannot even imagine my life would have been without you. And I do love you. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to maybe get married and have a family of our own. I want to tell my other kids this same story, how we met, and how I almost lost you in that accident. And in fact, they did tell their children when they were getting older to really understand the concept, this idea, and how this accident even happened. Their children was terrified knowing that their mom could lost their own life and they would never have been born. But they were happy that their dad was there by their mom's side as often as they could. And that made them respect and be proud of him. And for that, Nikki was grateful beyond any bond boundaries. And this is how Tony and Nikki found a true love and got a big fan together. The end.